when the oxygen falls down from the ceiling. <laughs> All right, so that's great. Um, so thank you for going through the briefing with us. We appreciate your time for that. Uh, I just want to quickly go over the agenda for this evening. Um, we'll see Kirsten Watson, the Deputy CEO of Operations of TTC, and Annalise Cherney, who's the Executive Vice President of Presto. They are behind me. They will take you through a presentation to begin with. We'll then open the floor for questions. 
We expect there to be almost an hour for questions. So we hope there's lots of time to hear from all of you and uh, have a really good discussion about the issues we want to bring forward and uh, really take it from there. My goal as a moderator is to get through as many questions as possible so no one leaves with their questions unanswered. <coughs> That's it for me to start. I'm going to turn it over to Kirsten and Annalise to get you going through the presentation. So good evening, everyone. I'm Kirsten Lazaro, as uh, Rob introduced me. Thank you so much for coming tonight. It's really great to see everybody here and the interest that um, moving to Presto as a team has generated. It's really great to see everyone. And we look forward to a very lively discussion um, and hearing what you have to say and uh, provide me with some answers and be providing us with this feedback on that. So as you know, the TPC is uh, in, mid, in the mid flight, I would say, mid uh, transition to Presto, to the fare card. Um, we have all of the stations have fare gates, all of the, all of the vehicles have Presto readers, monthly passes are now available on Presto, and of course there's the e for single ride available on Presto. We have more work to do, and in partnership with Metro, of course, we are continuing with this project. So over to um, Annalise to speak to some of the benefits of Presto. So, um, as you know, very well have the Presto card. Here's a, an example of that. Uh, they're available already through uh, our call center, uh, through Shoppers Record, and available in, in all of the TTC subway stations with their vending machines. Uh, in addition, through the TED and other transit agencies who are already on Presto throughout the GTHA in Ottawa. Um, one of the reasons for the card is, is rolled out the way it is is that it allows for transit riders to move seamlessly throughout all of the transit agencies and across transit modes, whether you're riding on a bus or through the subway or streetcar. Um, the other great benefits, however, are all about um, using them in, in terms of the difference between cash uh, and an electronic payment. And that means being able to register your card uh, and allow for an automated top-up, which means reloading your card with a uh, you know, set preset dollar amount um, as you wish if, you, if you're draining the card, or to automatically load passes um, so that every month you can just uh, renew your pass and, and not have to think about uh, going out uh, at the end of the month uh, to, to allow yourself to travel um, the next month. Uh, likewise, though, you're able to protect your balance. So if you are losing your card, um, which has already happened to me a couple of times, you have kids or you're just clumsy, uh, and uh, so you're able to, in fact, uh, protect your balance. And so if you've got a registered card, if you've lost your card, uh, you can put a block on it. So you basically um, uh, stop the fund, get a new card, and be able to transfer the either the remaining pass. So um, midway through the month, you can transfer the pass or any dollar amount that was on that card. Um, likewise, if you're traveling across uh, transit agencies, most of the agencies allow for a discounted transfer. And so if you're traveling, for instance, between GTC and GO, you receive a discounted uh, rate for traveling within a transfer window. And so that's all available in the Presto card, and that's already um, out today. And, and in fact, um, it is what we're really encouraging folks to use. Because in addition to all of that, which is about kind of all users, um, if you're a senior or a student, um, or uh, you're able to set that onto the card and receive discounted fares. And although there are differences between the transit agencies on the TTC, uh, you get discounts for a variety of different um, uh, fare, uh, fare concessions. Uh, so if you're, if you're a child, you ride for free, if you're a student, it's a discounted rate, and so on. And so that really is all available on the card itself. Um, that said, we are launching tickets. This is what a ticket looks like, and then we'll talk about it more. And tickets are really um, a closer equivalent to a token. Uh, so it's for a single ride. In fact, we're going to be launching them with um, two rides and a day pass. And this is more about people who, uh, for, for folks who, who aren't going to be using or riding transit as often. There aren't the same discounts available, although we will talk about that more. Um, but, but this is, you know, this is a, a different way to travel. We are launching this in February. Um, but we're slowly moving that over, and so really we're trying to encourage folks to ride on, uh, get a Presto card if, you, if you're a regular transit rider, and only use tokens, or sorry, tickets, if, if you think that you're not going to be riding more, more, than, more than once or twice. It's really get all the benefits if you're, if you're getting a Presto card. Okay, thanks, Annalise. I think I kind of uh, said some of this in the earlier, my earlier comments, but Presto readers have been installed at all TPC subway stations, all buses and streetcars, so all <coughs> Vehicles. I didn't mention Wheeltrans. Mm -hmm. uh, Presto readers are available on all buses and on the dedicated accessible cabs. We call those the ATs in the Wheeltrans world. Um, and we have a solution on the way for non-dedicated sedan taxis. We're not quite there yet. Um, we are in, uh, in consultation working with Metrolinx for a solution there. We expect to see something in the spring. Thank you. 
Um, so, uh, we've already got their vending machines installed in all of the GTC subway stations. Um, so, you notice know, so there's two different kinds, and effectively, um, the big box that uh, can sell a card, um, they can do everything that the smaller box can as well. So, these two allow you to check your balance, um, what's, you know, what's the current status of your card, but also be able to load funds or load a pass on. Um, we're encouraging everyone, obviously, to use these throughout the month, but obviously, if it's at the end of the month and you're looking to buy a pass, that's also the time to do that. Um, likewise, um, Presto is available in a variety of additional channels. So we've got an agreement with Loblaws, and all of these shoppers are immersed throughout all, um, all of Toronto. And then Shoppers Drug Mart, right? Pardon me? Shoppers Drug Mart. Okay. Yeah, Shoppers Drug Mart, and a couple of oh, other I know Loblaws, Loblaws owns owners, them, but... Not all of the other Loblaws, people. but every Shoppers Drug Mart throughout Toronto, as well as um, from Hamilton to Durham, um, does call and, and allow you to load, um, load funds and passes, as well as set concessions. Um, likewise, the PrestoCard.ca website is available for everyone to use, and that's where you can register your card and, and set up all the load and so on. Um, and also, we've got the contact center, and so you can uh, you can uh, call them, and they also provide service by email or live chat. And so, there's a variety of ways to get both information as well as to actually um, manage your account and and, and um, be able to manage your card. <coughs> So where are we in the transition um, process? So in June, uh, we agreed to the next phase of the Presto Transition Pact. We presented a report to our board outlining where we were. Um, on August uh, 2018, the monthly pass, youth 12 month pass and the youth senior pass were available. August 20, uh, we had the two hour transfer, which I think has been uh, a resounding success. If uh, people who have anything from that, I think it's a great thing. We want to thank our board and uh, Mayor Troy for their tremendous support on that initiative. Um, in November, we had the post-secondary monthly pass. So in December 2018, so this month, it's the last TTC metro pass. Um, the adult passes will be exclusively available on Festo. In February, we are anticipating that Festo tickets will be available at the fair vending machines. And in June, uh, we're anticipating that the Festo tickets will be available and not at all the fair vending machines, those are the machines that you know, we can only speak in stations, but also at Shoppers Drug Mart, and also by bulk, which is for people who purchase a um, number of tickets at once. Uh, I suspect some people here represent some of those agencies. Um, and then August 3rd, 2019 will be the last day to buy TTC tickets and tokens. And our, we anticipate that on 31st, uh, so about a year from now, um, will be the last day to use the uh, tickets and tokens in the system. And our intention is that we'll, move, we'll transition from the collectors in the booth to the collectors being available in the station to assist customers with hand-to-hand, face-to-face -hand, um, -face uh, contact in the system. Um, cash will continue, though, to be accepted on surface vehicles. Uh, we don't have a solution for that in place as of yet. Um, so that's, that will continue uh, in the foreseeable future. So some of the highlights which I've kind of uh, spoken about is the, the two-hour transfer on Presto. So that's available exclusively for customers who use the Presto card. The Fair Pass Phase 1, working with the City of Toronto, that has been launched. And um, we'll be coming forward with a five-year fair strategy. Uh, we anticipate that will be in sort of early, mid-2019. Um, and that will speak to sort of the long-term strategy around fair policy. So I mentioned about the Presto tickets and, um, and, and them coming in February, as Kristen mentioned, uh, and rolled out more widely um, in the months that follow. Um, but likewise, we're launching some extra things on Presto. So uh, we're in the last weeks of preparing for the launch of the Presto mobile app. So this will allow you to manage your account like you do on the website today, um, but be able to manage multiple cards, be able to load funds, and also be able to track your usage. So be able to see if you've um, if you, uh, you know, if the transactions as you've either loaded or, or written in transit and see the amount deducted on, on, the, on your phone or the app. Um, the added advantage is for compatible Android phones, uh, which have a reader on the back, you'll actually be able to, um, in real time, add funds to the cards. What that means is on your phone, be able to tap the card to the back of the phone and actually be able to load a pass or to load uh, funds. So $10, $20 onto, the, onto your card and be able to ride immediately. 
Um, the reason that it's only available on Android is because most of the, uh, the um, phones that, that enable that today, but the, the app itself, um, if Apple were to turn that on, we, we're ready to go for that as well. Um, we're very excited about the app. I, you know, we're, we're, I guess, in beta mode right now, and so, um, so you know, um, we're really excited to launch that. But likewise, we've got a lot of features um, available um, yet to come for the TTC, and so we've, um, we've prepared the technology and just need to turn it on at some point to have a weekly maximum, so that allows for um, people to ride um, basically an unlimited amount of time and to reach a cap for a week, and then um, following that, that maximum, uh, effectively be able to ride for free. And so there are advantages, obviously, to being able to use your Presto card and be able to kind of um, mimic what would otherwise be, say, a weekly pass. Um, oh, sorry, just comment on the weekly maximum. So, um, as Emily suggested, we're, we're bringing to our board uh, the estimate March 2019 availability for the weekly max, and that would be the same price as a weekly pass. So, it essentially replaces the weekly pass. Um, some other things that we'll be bringing to our board some uh, fair policy change recommendations to support the Presto tickets. Um, we would, we're going to be bringing to our board with approval, maybe making the recommendations, that we want to allow for Presto tickets to expire with an exchange program for expired unused Presto tickets, so for a valid fare of equal value. So 90 days after purchase, if you pick, get the ticket at 9 p.m., or one year um, expiry for bulk sales. So if you buy the, if you buy in bulk, you would have a one year expiry. If you buy in the machine, it's a 90 day expiry. If you happen to have that ticket after the 90 days, our intention is to recommend to our board that we be allowed to do a one-for-one -one exchange. Sorry, I'm sorry. I just want to stop for a minute. There's a lot of reading and talking, yeah. but uh, it's hard to follow. And so, for example, you said something about weekly max. I don't know what you were talking about, and then thereafter, I didn't know what you were talking about. So we would be happy. We'll get into all that. There's over an hour for. I understand, but when you continue to go on and no one can follow what you're saying, it just defeats the purpose. So if you could just backtrack a little bit. You just mentioned the words weekly max. There's no understanding of yeah. what that is. And then you said some more things that, again. Yeah, no, I get that. I think part of it is that we've just been living and breathing this so long. We're yeah. an assumption of knowledge. So I apologize if I was rushing that. So the weekly maximum, so currently there's a weekly pass. You can purchase a weekly pass from your collector. And some people make that choice based on based on their usage. Maybe a monthly pass doesn't economically work out for them, so they'll buy a weekly pass. It's not a very um, popular or well-used product because it really fits very much a niche market. People who you know have are using so many trips in a week. So that we're going to allow for the weekly pass. Essentially, we're calling it the weekly max on Presto. So we'll transition over to Presto. We have that question. Have had question. Will the weekly pass exist? So I guess what I'm telling you today is that our is our intention to recommend to our board, and I, I use those words very purposely. We have to go to our board for any fair policy change it needs to be approved by our board. So we will be recommending to our board that we have an equivalent product on Presto called the weekly max. So you'll be able to have unlimited travel in that week on Presto for the same price today, um, unless there's a that, but if, if I'm what I'm saying is would be the same price. So does that does that help? Yes. So in addition to going to our board for approval around the weekly max and um, and that product, we also want to go to them to help uh, them enable. We'll, we'll take questions at the end. Sir, no, sir. Man, I just have a suggestion. See, there are two of you. It might be good for one of you to act like a dumb citizen and another one as an expert and have a question and answer. That way we will get it better. Mm -hmm. That could be the nice next one. Thank you. So the, the Presto tickets, we need to enable, we need to do some fair policy changes to allow us to use the, the Presto tickets. And I know that some of the issues that I'm talking about now are of particular interest uh, to many of the people here. So we, would, we, were, we will be going to our board with the recommendation that if you purchase a Presto ticket at the FBM or the retail channel, which is Shopper Start Mart, it will expire in 90 days. If you purchase a ticket through the bulk sales, which is what generally what organizations will use, they will buy um, you know, a large a quantity of tickets to distribute to whoever their various stakeholders are, those tickets purchased in bulk will last for one year. 
and the date will be printed on the, on the ticket. We appreciate that some people may not be able to use their tickets within that time period. So if you cannot use your ticket within 90 days, we are going to be recommending to our board, again, I caution around that this is not a done deal, this is gonna be our recommendation, that you will be able to do a one-for-one -one exchange. Okay? Um, so I'll answer more specific questions in a second. Just, I'll, I'll finish the um, presentation. Um, the bulk sales, uh, if you purchase a, a Presto ticket through bulk sales, it will have a bulk discount, which is the um, adult youth and, uh, sorry, it will be at a discount to the fair. Um, and it has to be a minimum order, the bulk sales will be a minimum order of 400. Tickets are $400. Pardon? Tickets are $400. No, 400, sorry, bulk sales is 400 tickets. Okay, so we'll go to the next slide. So as I mentioned, and we, will, we will answer specific questions after, so we'll, uh, we'll do kind of the high-level briefing, and then if, if folks have uh, specific questions, we'll get into those. So as we are talking about, so this is this is the disposable ticket. Uh, it's a paper-based product. So this is paper. It's a bit glossy-ish paper, but inside has the, there's an electronic chip. And so this chip acts just like the chip on the Presto card. You tap it against the reader, uh, and it deducts the amount uh, uh, that's, that's you know, relevant for your ride. So uh, if you're tapping through and it deducts the amount for a single ride, uh, it still allows you to transfer in the two hour transfer window for free. Um, and, and you can ride in that two hour, two hour window. Um, but then if you go and you, you don't have any funds left on it and you tap, obviously the reader won't, uh, it won't allow you to walk through the gate or, or you'll, you'll hear the beep when you're um, boarding a vehicle that, that you don't have enough funds. These are not reloadable cards. Um, uh, they're a more simple form of the chip, and so they're not they're not able to be reloaded. So if you are going to be a regular user, we do encourage everyone to buy a Presto card. Um, and as we mentioned, they'll be available first in the fair vending machines throughout the TTC subway uh, locations, and after that um, through Shoppers Drug Mart. Um, we are in discussions and trying to figure out. Um, we do know that this uh, causes gaps in terms of the uh, geographic availability of the, of the tickets. And so we're in discussions to figure out um, how can we ensure that everyone has access um, to be able to buy them. Because we do know that today you only need to shop this drug mart. We do have holes geographically, and in particular in the northeast and northwest corners of the city. Um, where obviously people are taking buses, they aren't necessarily close to a shopper's drug mart and certainly aren't close to a subway station. So we're working together to figure out how we can um, best serve those areas of the city. But likewise, as Kirsten mentioned, mm -hmm. um, TTC is working with, um, with uh, different groups to allow for bulk purchases. So she mentioned um, being able to buy orders of 400 uh, tickets at a time and also being able to get a discounted price in that way. And that way then, obviously, being able to hand them out to individual um, people uh, as you do today with the token. Um, I first mentioned the expiry, and, and I can maybe answer a couple of questions preemptively. So the tickets do have an expiry date, and that's um, effectively to have a balance of, um, obviously, these are electronic systems and we hold a lot of information. Um, uh, and we anticipate selling millions of these, and so there was a bit of a decision um, in the beginning to, to figure out what's the optimum, I'll call it, for the balance of storing all of this information uh, and the systems that support that and the cost of doing that um, with, with how, we, how we think people might end up using them. And again, because they're um, reusable Presto cards, um, people who today may personally buy uh, you know, um, seven or more uh, tokens at a time, actually it's more cost effective for them to, to use a Presto card. So we're encouraging people who normally today might have a lot of tokens in their possession to, to move over to Presto. So we've made a decision now to start off with the, uh, the tickets we have in a 90 day expiry. Um, and as Kristen mentioned, if they're going to be available um, um, in other ways within one year expiry. We're gonna see how that goes. Um, if in a year or so we figure out that this isn't meeting customers' needs, we'll, we'll come back and we'll, we'll see if we need to, to change the date. But today, the way we're ordering them from, from the producer effectively, they'll be preset at those times. In terms of the one-year expiry, they're actually coded for longer than one year, so they'll have a date on them. 
Um, but that's, we're saying, you know, at least a year because we know that um, as it moves through the chain in terms of being sent from the manufacturer and distributed through, you know, to the TTC and through the different agencies, that we want to make sure that everyone's not getting less than a year. So we've set them for a bit longer, but we're saying that they're going to be, um, uh, you know, expirably a year or more. Um, and those ones will have the date printed on them, so they'll just see, see the expiry date. Uh, for those that expire at 90 days, however, they won't have a date printed on them. Um, that's because the, the machines don't, uh, you know, that, uh, it's just not simple to do. So again, we're trying this out, and if we have to make changes later on, um, we'll, we'll do that. Um, the last thing as a reminder is that because these don't offer transfers to other transit agencies, um, we want to make sure that, um, uh, you know, we're working with groups like yourselves, um, individual systems, or, or through different groups, um, to look at the places where people are traveling that are on the edges of different municipalities. Because the, the tickets won't really serve needs of people who are traveling, say, between Mississauga and, and, and Toronto, or on, you know, or north to, to your region and so on. So we do want to make sure that we're working with you to, to um, address the specific needs, because ultimately the point of moving over to electronic fare payment is to allow people to move seamlessly throughout the region. Um, and, so, and so tickets won't, won't effectively meet everybody's needs. Um, I think I've, I've mostly mentioned all of these things, but we'll go through um, uh, the list just to clarify. Um, and I believe this information is all available online. We've shared the deck, so if everybody wants this, um, this, uh, these materials, you can, you can see them online as well. But uh, the reusable Presto card, as I mentioned, it's a durable plastic. These are meant to stay in your pocket for years and years, um, effectively like a, like a credit or debit card if you put in your wallet. Um, the, the tickets have, as I mentioned, a similar chip inside, but it's not as, as durable, and so uh, it's basically paper, you can kind of rip it, and, um, and so we want to make sure that, you know, if you think you're going to be keeping, um, you know, saving for a rainy day, uh, actually it's probably better to have a Presto card because you can both protect your balance, but also um, the actual card itself will, will last. Um, the cost of the fare media, so uh, uh, Presto is rolled out in 10 other transit agencies, as I mentioned, and the, the Retail price, let's call it, is six dollars. So uh, when you first buy a Presto card, it costs you six dollars. In many areas, in the first rollout, um, transit agencies have decided to discount them, and, and um, Kirsty can speak more to that um, in a little bit. Um, but the standard price is six dollars. So if you ever lose your card uh, and you want to buy a new one, uh, either through the website or shoppers, um, it'd be six dollars. The ticket itself, for the actual piece of paper with the chip on it, the ticket is free, but it'll be effectively like buying a token. So it's the price of the fare um, includes the, the price of the ticket itself. Um, the tickets are not reloadable, um, whereas the Presto card is, which is both reloadable um, online as well as in person at a ticket uh, vending machine or um, through a customer service agent. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the discounts that are available for different customer groups are, are available um, um, to everyone uh, on the Presto card, um, but only in specific programs um, for the tickets themselves. Um, part of this is, quite frankly, a cost, uh, cost thing. The tickets are quite expensive, and whether it comes from your municipal or your provincial uh, tax money, um, we're trying to get a balance of giving access to everyone for transit, but uh, saving money. And so again, um, there are different fair policies that look to which discounts to be able to apply to which fair products. Um, the Presto cards, as I mentioned, don't have an expiry, but the actual funds on the, on the cards themselves don't expire either. So when you put $4 or whichever amount onto a Presto card, um, it sits there effectively in perpetuity and, and left until you use it. Um, the tickets do have an expiry, um, as Chris mentioned, um, 90 days or, or one year, um, as the case may be. Um, as I mentioned, uh, on your Presto card, it protects against loss. If you lose your card, you can, you can block it and move the funds that you've had or the pass that you've had to another card. Um, you can't do that with the ticket. These act more effectively like tokens or cash, which is if you lose it, um, uh, unfortunately, you've lost the value. Um, and as finally, as I mentioned, you, you know, uh, traveling throughout uh, the regions that Presto serve can be done with a Presto card. Um, and unfortunately, for the tickets, those are only for usage on the TTC. So, um, so those are some of the key differences, but if people have additional questions, we can uh, answer those later. Oh, and that's actually the right time. All right, so.
thank you for your patience for us going through the presentation. We can see there's lots of questions. <laughs> just uh, waiting. Some Hello. other members of the team, they're going to join Annalise and Kirsten on stage so that we have the right people there to answer your questions. Uh, we have two people with mics, one on each side of the room. Where have they gone? Oh, there's one over here. The other one is here. So please raise your hand. The other thing we have are potential questions coming in online, and we will take those as well. I see some are starting to come in as well. We will get through as many as we can. First thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to have the people who have come up with the panel introduce themselves so that you know what they do and who they are. Hi, I'm uh, Michelle from Park Cousins. I'm manager of Fair Policy at DC. I'm Alan Foster. I am the head of the Fair Park Program at DC. I am Mia Bella from Louder, louder. You need a mic. There we go. I'm Leah Ballot. I'm a business relationship manager with Customer. And Ian Richards. I'm senior advisor accessibility at Where's John Corey? All right, so we're going to start. First question is going to come over here on my right. Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, thank you for hosting us. Uh, I'm interested to know about the uh, reseller program, specifically about how uh, shoppers and lot laws were chosen. Um, what was what was the decision behind that? How was that? Was it communicated? Was there some sort of co consultation for the community to have a, um, a say in which businesses are going to be um, sort of, I guess, get this business? And uh, what was the rationale behind that? Great, thank you. Annalise is going to answer that question. Yeah, so Metro Links has an agreement, as you mentioned, with Loblaws, um, primarily under the shopper's banner, but in some some locations, uh, additional banners, um, uh, like no frills and so on. Um, the the Lawless was chosen through a competitive um, uh, call for partnerships by Metrolinks uh, several years ago. I think the process started three years ago and was finalized a year later. Uh, so there was an open call for, for retail partners, um, and, and um, uh, there were a variety of organizations who applied. Uh, the reason for the partnership specifically, as opposed to the current process, which is selling through a variety of, um, of you know, single stores or small, smaller um, types of retail locations, is that uh, with Presto, you need to have a, a, a equipment to be able to load the funds onto the card or to be able to load the pass onto the card. And that equipment obviously costs it's money and that needs to, be, needs to be managed. And so there was a decision to, and as I mentioned, you know, we do need to work together to figure out if we cause gaps from an access perspective. But in most areas, uh, Shoppers Drug Mart provides um, a kind of a walkable distance for people to be able to go to the location and um, And so, so, so we're going to that. very busy and a senior was in front of me trying to get information. I, I think that's a real problem because they're so busy unless you have someone that's designated directly for that information and they're selling of tickets, it's going to be an issue. 
Um, the, other thing, the other thing I have, I'm thinking about cost. I don't, as, as, a, as are you. Well, what are you going to do with all those millions of tokens that have been created, right, for one? And then the cost of this new ticket with your microchip. Like, I really think that sort of goes a step backwards. You already have tokens. People are asking to keep that token. So. All right, thank you. I'm yes. So I think, I think it's important to understand where we are in the transition, and that is that we're, we're in transition, um, and that we anticipate that the last opportunity to use your tokens will be you know, the end of next year. So we're asking people to use the tokens in transition to Presto. That's what the fair card is for and the benefits that Annalise has outlined in the presentation. Um, but if you if you have, we know that there are people who have a lot of tokens and perhaps won't be able to use them um, all up in a year, and we get that. And so what we will be looking at is what kind of a refund or one-for-one -one type of um, uh, program that we can do to help customers you know, get rid of their tokens, essentially, and move over to Presto uh, at the end of next year. Thank you. I'm going to read one from the web as we have lots of questions coming in. So Katie asks, which organizations are eligible to purchase vault tickets at a discounted rate? Michelle. Hi. Um, so anybody who can make the minimum order of 400 is basically we're going to need to our book. Thank you. Uh, next question is your request. Um, before, oh, sorry, before I ask my question, I just want to say a shopper's Denmark is the only place selling um, Presto cards in my riding of Europe Southwest, and that means it's going to go from 37 sellers to two, and that's terrible. Sorry. Um, my question is: um, so, are there not going to be student and senior discounts with tickets? Um, and I think that's quite problematic for nonprofits, especially nonprofits serving low-income youth. So I'll take this yeah. out. So one of the things we're going to do in our January board report is ask for a bulk discount um, for the Presto ticket. So anybody who can do that bulk sale um, will get the token ticket price on the Presto ticket. Okay. And pending board approval, but that's what we're asking. But not on the individual, like if someone was buying individual tickets? Correct. Hey, we're going to go over to this side, please. Thank you. I am obliged Well, they have somebody over there. No, that's not so, yeah. Okay, so I'm glad you said that any organization can buy the, the uh, bulk sales, but you're still being a little bit unclear as to what that process of buying is. Um, I don't think you should describe it as a discount if you're. It, 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 <laughs> I assume and I hope you're talking about the regular non-cash price of either three dollars or two oh five currently or whatever those prices might change to in the future. It, and you're not talking about some arbitrary price which is different from that. So can you first clarify that the price will not be any higher than the current non-cash price? Because I'm not prepared to pay more. I do $10,000 worth of business on this every year, and the people who receive them from me won't see their price go up by 5, 10, or 25 cents. They'll see their price go up by $3 because they're not paying anything now, and they will be paying, or they would have to, or they would have to just not travel. So don't think about some arbitrary price here. Make it clear that the price is the same non-cash price. And secondly, in terms of the actual process for buying them, you're still being a little bit unclear on that. I hope that it continues to be what it is now, which is I walk up to a place with a credit card and I walk away with them. I, I can't work with either online or delivery. Um, I don't use online at all. And delivery, I mean, I don't have like a second staff person to stay at a place to receive them while I'm out at meetings. I have to be able to go to a place and physically buy them myself because I don't have like multiple people working with me. So I need to know two things. One is that the price is the same price, the $3 or 205 
and secondly, that the actual process of purchasing them is an in-person credit card purchase where I walk away with them at the same point in time. I can't deal with any other complexities in the purchase process. But the, the 400 minimum is about sort of where I sit. I could accept that. It's, it, I'm sure that for many people it's completely ridiculous to have to buy 400 at a time, whereas right now you can buy three at a time. I could live with that, but I cannot live with any change in the process by which you actually buy them, which has to be in-person credit card. Really? Thank you. Uh, yeah, so just to be clear, what I was saying earlier, yes, it would be the $3.205 price, Michael, we've decided to this, but uh, yeah, definitely, it's going to be the ticket token price, that's what we're asking our board, again, we do need board approval, because it is a fair change. Um, as far as the process for bulk sales, and or in person, online, we are still working through that, so we're working with Metro Life and Partnership. I go here again for questions. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So I have. Sorry, I just need. I need to read this. So either you're going to put your arm across my body, sorry. or you're just going to let me hold it. Um, so basically, uh, I have a few questions that I'm hoping to get answers for. These are questions that are raised by the public, and you've also raised some new things tonight that I have now seen that will be problematic for the public to understand. With regards to uh, the costs, I hear that there's a mention of costs, but there's no figures that have been given. To date, what has been the expense to implement Presto systems? So that would include the gates. I know as of uh, June this year, it was 288 million just to put in the, the gates. But so far, we've passed that date. And I'm wondering what has been the expense so far to implement the gates and all these other additional systems that you're now talking about, that there are new systems coming, addition to that. And then I have a question with regards to uh, the environmental impacts of printing out paper when we already have tokens, when all we can do is, if it's the exact same thing, it doesn't make sense to me. So I'm wondering about the, uh, the environmental assessment on the impact of now having to print these uh, tickets. And then I'll have a question about the tickets. I have a head injury, so I need to hear your answers so that I can further finish my question so that I'm making sure I follow. So, um, uh, I'll answer the first question about costs as we, um, we um, uh, discussed with our board uh, in the beginning of the summer. Uh, to date, a uh, billion dollars has been spent on Presto. That includes um, uh, both the back, back office system as well as all the equipment for all, for all 11 transit agencies. So that's not the TTC alone. I'm asking specifically for Toronto for the TTC. Yeah, so those figures haven't been made public. Why? These are things that go to our boards and so on. So I'll talk in generalities. Um, so, so I'm sorry. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page because this I understood was, can you hear me? Yeah. This I understood was supposed to be an information session. And so being an information session, we're hoping you have information to provide um, when asked. And when it comes to our dollars, because it's every person in this room and everyone outside of this room, it's our dollars that are paying for these systems. And so when we ask about how much it's costing us, that's not a secret thing. That is something that should be made public. The TTC is required to publicize its expenses. That's how come I know we've spent over $288, uh, sorry, $288 million putting in gates alone, and that's just the gates. I'm wanting to know the figures to date since the knowledge of the TTC producing that information from June uh, with regards to the gates, but not only the gates, also, in addition, are these new systems that you're talking about that have not been implemented yet, the paper and the environmental assessment with regards to the printed paper. So that question still remains, and I still didn't get to ask the others because I'm not wanting a response saying, oh, that's secret. It cannot be secret. So we can all answer the, we can answer the question about the gates. Maybe so the, the gates themselves, it's a TTC product, and the overall cost, which includes the supply of the gates and our services, so that's all the work with the gates and the stations, has an overall budget of uh, just over $50 million. How so uh, much? $50 million. Uh, I'm sorry, that can't be correct. I'm sorry, can As you, of at, me just for a second, because we need to get the information to you. So Yes, but that's why I wanted answer. to make sure I heard him, that's if he fine. said 50, one, five, zero? No, five, zero million. Right. 
but as of June, it was 288 million, so that can't be correct. It's, yeah, so I'm not sure of the source of the 200. It came from TTC. Yeah, so maybe we can follow up after. I can tell you that the overall budget to implement the air gates is not 288 million. It's on TTC's own website, it's published documentation. So we'll have to be honest, I don't know what the source of that is. And I can TTC. <laughs> No, but my problem, sir, is that I think some people think it's acceptable to pass over an answer and pretend that's an answer when it's not an answer. This is TTC's budget report as of June 2018. It's a published document. And it was 244000 to start off. And when you add all the other costs, it's approximately $288 million so far for the gates alone. Because you're right when you identify, I think it was you in the black, I'm sorry for saying you, but the lady in black, that it was identified that we are responsible, Toronto is responsible for the gate. So we're well aware of that. But when you're telling me it's $50 million, that is not accurate based on TT's own, TTC's own reporting. So when I come here tonight, I'm needing figures and I'm needing answers that are accurate so that we, when we disseminate the information, I want to go back and look at what you're looking at. I want you to produce that in a tangible way that we can show members of the public so we can all be on the same page. We can't be guessing at these things. Facts are what's important here. Oh, I, I, mean, are also to us. I, I think one of the things that maybe we need to clarify is the purchase and installation of the fair gates themselves is part of an overall fair line project. And that's a long term project that existed far before we started to implement uh, Presto or the TTC. What you have to look at is within that overall program, what is the specific cost for fair gates versus all the other things that we've been doing with turnstiles and the other fair line equipment. I think when you look at that, you'll see that the actual cost of the gates themselves, which includes the purchase of the hardware and all the implementation costs, is within the $50 million range. But the overall cost of the life cycle program, which existed prior to Fair Gates, when you add all of that up to the prior years leading up to 2017 when we started this work, is perhaps in the range that you're talking about. And I think that's probably where the clarification needs to be. So no, we're but gonna answer, I, I my know. question is to date, right now, what has been the cost for the Presto systems, not only the gates, but also these new, because surely you have a budget that's projecting how much it's costing for the upcoming figures and the new rollouts and the different things that you're now mentioning to us tonight. We have no figures for that. That's what we're asking about. So to date, what has been the cost and what can Torontonians expect as being the cost? We don't want you to just brush over it. These are things that we need to know. I, I, sorry, I thought the original question was the cost of the fair gates themselves. You are correct. The fair gates is one component of the Presto rollout. The additional cost to roll out the rest of the Presto system, that is to work with Metro Links to install the equipment on carbiners, the, the software that you're talking about, has an approved budget today of $47 million. So that is in addition to the actual cost of the fair gates themselves. So I'm sorry, the, the original question I thought was the cost of just fair gates themselves. I thought we'd answer, but there's an separate budget for the overall rollout of Presto to TTC, which today has an approved budget of $47 million. Okay, and then the environmental question, I believe, was also unanswered so far. Yeah, so I can speak to that. Um, <coughs> I, I, we share your concerns. The tickets are not recyclable. Um, uh, yeah, and, uh, and, and that's consistent uh, with uh, transit agencies throughout the world where uh, these products aren't recyclable, and, and that's because of the chip inside. Um, so we would love to have everyone go over to Presto so that they're reusing the cards and not and not throwing these out. But we are concerned about that as well, and um, and we're working with our manufacturers to see if there's anything we can do. But today, um, that is correct. I'm going to move to another question. Sorry, no, I, I, I actually, no, I actually, no, listen, I, I, I appreciate that, but you also have to appreciate there are people in the room with disabilities, yes. and I identified that to you, that I need to be able to ask a question, hear the answer, to know that when I asked my question that I wanted to follow up, which I identified to you from the outset, I wanted that addressed. I don't want these things to be dismissed. When I asked about the recyclable tickets, there was a reason why I asked about that. If TTC and Metrolix are not taking steps to make sure of environmental measures, that's a problem. And why do that when the tokens are the same exact same thing? Why do that? Tokens are recyclable. So why the need to do this when it's the exact same thing? Well, I'll, I'll just I'll try to answer it. I think the 
that you're right, tokens are reusable. Yeah. We're, you know, we, we've seen that over the years. We, um, we are concerned that the tickets are not recyclable. We are. So we have to, again, we're in transition. We need to figure this stuff out. We need to figure it out with Metrolinks. Um, but again, most people, most customers are adopting, we have about a 40% adoption rate around Festo right now. That card is forever. That, that, it's like your, your Jordan's card or your whatever cards you have in your wallet. That is the ultimate environmental friendliness in the sense that you can carry that thing for 10 years. That's not the question I'm asking. I'm asking why choose something that's equivalent to what we already have? There's no additional rollout cost. There's no additional environmental cost. Why choose something that you already have to do something that is not better than? No, no, you can't dismiss it. That's the question. We're not dismissing it. We anticipate that we will have a festival adoption rate, which means that the, you know all the customers that we use uh, that use the TTC. Our goal and our plan is that approximately 85 percent of people will be on the card. So that's a significant you know portion of the customers that will be on a plastic card, which you know it's not completely environmentally friendly. It's still a plastic card. But they will be not be they will not be using um, uh, tickets. Uh, they will not be using tokens. They will be moving to. The That's not the yeah. question. The question is about the paper tickets that have a chip okay. that are not recyclable. They That's what the, the question. So no, I prefer them say they don't have the answer and that we've not thought about this and that we're doing something that's not environmentally safe. I'd rather you say that than to dismiss it and say something else I that I'm not I, asking. I can assure you, I am not being dismissive. I think both Anna Lisa and I have said that we care. We, you know, we recognize that the tickets are not environmentally friendly as they are today, and we need to work on that. I'm going to move to another question over here. Thank you. Hi. Sorry I'm that you're on in there so long. Um, why I need to put $10 into my personal yeah. card before I can use it. Why can't I just put a, a single player token into the personal that I've already gotten instead of buying a single player personal? Thank you, Ellie. Yeah, I'll speak to that. So um, that's actually something that uh, that predates uh, both Kirsten and I being on the program. And um, it's something that we've tabled with our governance. Uh, so, and in fact, we'll be, we'll be discussing next Monday when we meet. So all of the policies that impact um, uh, the, all of the transit agencies who participate in Presto have to obviously be agreed to by all, all, all the agencies. Uh, and so we're, we're tabling that. Uh, likewise, we know that this isn't great for customers. And in fact, in some channels, it's $10, in others, it's 5 and sometimes there's the case that it's nothing. And so the inconsistency, but also the minimum, is a problem. And so that's something we're looking at with all of the transit agencies. So we're hoping that... Um, through a variety of ways, we'll be able to change that going forward. It won't happen on Monday, but the decision to move that forward um, on both will Okay, thank you. I'm going to read one from online, please. And that question is, who owns the data that will be generated from tracking individual movements through the GTA over years? Will it be publicly available? If profit is generated, will it be returned to the transit agency for public good? Or is Presto entitled to keep any data-related profits? And please. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, data is one of those great things that gets everyone excited, um, uh, both because uh, um, there's concerns about privacy, but also there's questions about um, potential revenues or profits that come from the use of data for private sector usage. Um, Metrolinx, like all government agencies, is, is governed by a variety of um, both uh, freedom of information acts on one hand and the open data policy, as well as privacy um, regulations on the other. Um, so to date, um, we do not uh, sell the data for, to third parties. Um, in fact, in part because we're working with policymakers and, and you know, um, advisors to ensure that we understand uh, where, we, where we fall within the open data versus the privacy factor. That said, I do want to assure everybody that all of the data that we collect is anonymous. So although people um, have registered, you know, if you have an account and you've registered with us, um, your individual travel data can't be connected to you as an individual. So although we can collect this rich data to see how, um, you know, in general, people move throughout the variety of systems, which allows transit agencies like the TTC to be able to do better trip planning and so on, we actually can't, um, the system itself doesn't allow for us to connect 
um, um, you know, to be able to drill down and to be able to, to identify that salary, for instance, is where I need specific way. So, um, so we are, um, we're interested to know through the, the kind of evolution of public policy where the open data director um, travel data ends up. Um, so we're, we're kind of in a holding pattern waiting for that, and, and for now we're keeping um, everybody's information safe. Hey, can everyone hear me? Okay, perfect. So this might be a bit of a follow-up to that question. Because I'm just thinking, you know, if you have everyone and they're either using a card or using a disposable card that you can't recycle with a chip, you pretty much know where everyone's going because that's yeah. how you're tracking them. And regardless of your decisions now, you're probably going to make some decisions in the future about what people are going to book their condos, where advertisers are going to advertise. That's very valuable data, and we hope you probably know all of that. So I might just reiterate that previous question, how are you going to give this back to the people? Because there are many glaring issues with accessibility in terms of affordability, in terms of how people are marked if they use the tickets, how will people be treated differently? Um, in terms of people on ODSP, if they make a certain amount of money for transportation, if you have $120 of transportation allowance, you are not eligible for the fair pass because you have too much money. So maybe someone needs to take a taxi. Maybe, maybe they're not always going to be using the metro pass. So again, with these issues of classism, with widening the wealth gap, and with uh, the environmental factors, how are you going to be giving back to the people? Well, obviously, the data is going to be used for advertising and to go to work for free. Um, I think that one way that the data will give back to people who use the TTC is that we will be in and are starting to use the data to see where people are traveling, not on an individual level. We are not able to see where you specifically are traveling, but we can use that data to say, you know what, we have an extremely crowded bus at this time of day in this neighborhood, and there's clearly a need for more transit here based on the data and then we can move the resources accordingly. And then we can also say, maybe that bus is not required as frequently in that neighborhood, and we can reallocate the resources. So I do think that the data will come back to help us all as customers and as planners and as individuals, that the, the, re the precious resources we have around transit will be in the right place at the right time, and they will be there because that's where the people have indicated that they're traveling to and from. So I do see that as a it doesn't work like that. I will come to the the question, which was about um, actual financial value being derived from the data. So, um, Metrolinx is I mean, it's a government agency, it's a non profit um, agency. So, if there is money to be made um, in terms of. Uh, 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 yeah, so Presto is a part of Metrolinx as a government agency of the Ministry of Transportation. Um, and so, uh, so any, if, if in <laughs> fact we were to sell uh, information or data to a private sector company, which we have not decided to do, uh, then, then that money would go back into, into funding for, for hopefully transit and other things. Um, that said, I think, you know, I, I'd like to set a little bit of context. So 15 years ago, when we started, um, uh, most people didn't have uh, mobile or smartphones that they used all the time. We weren't connecting the way that we were. I think the value of that data 15 years ago was also very, very high. It wasn't a way to track how people move throughout a region or a specific neighborhood. Um, today, uh, there are a lot of private sector companies who do do similar types of data gathering. Google, for instance, and Apple buy your iPhone. So the actual financial value of that data is probably diminished compared to what we would have thought even two to three years ago, but certainly compared to 15 years ago. That said, if there is profit to be made, we'll have to collect a little bit something that our board and the province um, have to say and, and um, you know, wouldn't be done um, thoughtlessly. Thank you for answering. I just want to say when you're literally putting up gates to keep people out of taking a subway where they can't go in there without providing their data and where they're going, uh, that's one thing. And another thing is if our country is being run by corrupt business people, then it's harder to have that much faith in a crown corporation as much as we want to. Well, Very good, sister. So, I, if, you, if you don't register your card, uh, you literally, that card remains anonymous. Um, so, 
So yeah, data no, is collected. Data is collected. That data does have public value in terms of transit planning, as we mentioned. Um, uh, but you, but you have a choice to remain anonymous to the system as a person. Right. All right. Thank you. We have a question. Our next microphone is in the back. Hello. Um, this is Alex. So I want to make a suggestion to the TC. I mean, not this year or next year, but say within the next five years, I really want the TC to eliminate cash fares on all transit service vehicles entirely. So it can be all presser cards, all just presser cards, and possibly when it's credit debit and smartphone functionality becomes available. That's why I want to see the cash fares eliminate from TC vehicles. The reason why I want cash to be eliminated on TC vehicles, like all vehicles across the city, and perhaps other DTHA transit stories that have Presto, is because it's safer for drivers, it's safer for passengers, faster, more reliable, more on time. Because you know that they, these drugs can be threatened with assault, they can be threatened with assault, no, they can be threatened with harm, death, they can be, um, they can be threatened, and, um, and because, um, I mean, drivers should not have to be distracted with cashers, and that's why I want, in the, I want, I mean, a total ban on cash, no cash of any kind, no coins, no bills allowed on all buses, all three cards across the entire TDC, either a presser card or any electronic forms of payment. I want that to happen in, let's say, within the next five years. I don't mean 2020, but within the next five years. I really want this to happen. Can you bring this up to the attention of the board, TDC, MetroLink, and the, the, I want to bring this up to the world, the, the, the Prime Minister, Thank you. Okay, well, why don't you do that for us? Thank you for that. I'm going to take the next one. I always send your plants. Oh, there you are. Right here. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Kai Kadewa. I would like, firstly, I must tell you, I have, with all due respect to all the people on the podium, I have 10 of your slides on my phone. And none of them have any cost figures. None of them. I mean, are you informing us about cost? Mm. Are you telling us what? I mean, we, we are not getting the information like the lady before said. The cost figures are completely missing. And with due respect to you, you have to call another meeting for us. With you coming prepared mm. and cost. Because you are not prepared. So that's one thing. Secondly, I must say, I made a suggestion before that two of you should, uh, you know, talk one like a dumb citizen and one of you. I changed that now. I said, you should get a citizen and one of you. Thank you. Uh, where is our next microphone? I have lost her. Oh, there you are. Over here. Um, I'm glad that you're asking, you, you were talking about the cost of those fare gates. Um, I have noticed at more than half the time that I've used the TTC that they're not working. Um, and often people are very frustrated about using them. In addition to those costs, there are also costs associated with the fare inspectors. And I just wondered, with all that money that is being spent with, um, with a system that is totally, in, in a lot of ways, not working, and also with fair inspectors that awfully uh, get into so much trouble and end up having to be uh, cost in, in courts, I just wondered, why don't we have free fare? Exactly. <laughs> question. I'm going to read the one that's on the screen in front of me from online, which is, why do all the people who won't use Presto still have to help pay for it? Maybe I can speak to that. Uh, so, so, as we mentioned, Presto uh, is, is funded by the Ministry of Transportation, so indeed that comes through, uh, through your provincial taxes, and whichever portion of the TTC um, is accountable through your municipal taxes. Um, like many items um, that are funded through, through government, these are used by some, but not all citizens. And I'd say the equivalent would be if you don't have a car, um, part of your taxes go to keeping up roads. And so it, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things that um, is funded through the whole. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
How is it that you could exclude <laughs> cash as a form of payment for using the GTC or any public service? Payment for public service would be through cash, which is issued by the government. You can't create your own private cloud account on the system by saying you can only use it for the cloud. I don't see how, at the present time, because it's stated otherwise, that you're not able to use cash on the RT on the Spadina line, which is going to Spadina. You cannot put in a token, nor can you put in cash. Mm -hmm. so you cannot really put in money That's to pay my question. Yeah. You can only use it if you have a Presto card. Similarly, there are various entry points into the TTC system, such as the Delaware entrance and others, where you can only enter if you have a Presto card. You cannot use it if you have a token or cash. I don't see how you come up with this idea that you can not allow the use of coins or money, which is issued by the federal government, as payment. <laughs> In case of being passed, it's a nuisance to have to do some of the credit cards to the TV, uh, and then doing it on that to the other side. Why don't you have to use the credit card while others are lined up to pay for it with cash, which is exactly fair, which is what the GCC drivers wanted, was the exact fair with cash. So I don't see how you come with the proposition that you allow for payment with cash, and you don't, especially on the RT, like which is fair. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
because to be blunt, we don't have all the answers. And so some of it's about the technology, and there have been decisions that were made in the past when Presto was first uh, you know, um, built, which is a constraint today. That said, um, we're in the midst of revising our, or kind of refreshing our roadmap in terms of the things that we want to build from a technology and a product perspective. And maybe in consulting uh, with you and others, um, more frequently, we'll do better as we roll things out. So, so I'm actually asking a, a call back, which is, please let's spend more time together. I can hand out my card to folks who are interested. We'd actually like to spend time with you and, and potentially get ahead of some of us, uh, you know, not addressing these needs. Because we agree there are, there are some problems. I'm particularly concerned about your, the safety issue, but also if you have a uh, limited mobility, um, being part of the uh, criminal work plan, Well said, and yet we're moving forward. There is, you know, if there is no consultation, there isn't that opportunity. We're in the race to the bottom, because I think it's very clear what the individuals in this room have said is there's fundamentally a problem out there. I happen to represent the Toronto Association of BIAs. 1,400 of our merchants or those people that have carried themselves and carried the TTC on their back for years and years and years, supplying that. And to have been cut out, cut out, three years ago? How long is that RFP for? What's the term of that contract? Nobody knows. Is, is uh, Shoppers Drug Mart getting 1% of the take, the way the small businesses used to get, and the way they were abused? You lose a Metro Pass, and you're paying for the next three months of your TTC sales for that Metro Pass. There's fundamentally issues, now, let alone the gaps that are out there. So I'll be the first to stand up and say I'll be happy to spend time with you to talk about these gaps, to talk about the abilities of supporting local small business, which creates most of the jobs that are out here in this city and this province. Yeah. And let's stop the charade because this is pushing forward stuff that's been premeditated, pre-decided. Shoppers Drug Mart not only has the TTC contract from the, T uh, from the City of Toronto perspective, they also have the yellow bag contract that has been given to them. So yeah. here we are for small businesses that purchase have yeah. to purchase yellow and bags that comes to the put their. So you know it's about time that we call this what it is. We need to sit down, truly rethink this, and make it function for everybody in this yeah. city. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So I take one from online. Michael Holloway asks. Metrolinks make it so social service agencies who give out free transportation can use Presto cards instead of paper tokens, and then social service agencies can reload the cards so clients aren't throwing away plastic cards after yeah. each trip. Yeah. That's the thing. They will take that? Yeah, so we actually do have a program that is being put in place to help some different social agencies and organizations. Um, it's called the Presto Voucher, and that provides an ability for, for organizations to remotely and electronically push funds to cards. So in instances specific to this one, um, they would have the ability to hand collect cards or collect card numbers from their constituents or the individuals who are in the program and be able to push the funds to those cards to allow them to write. Thank you. Karen, I'm back to you. All right. Hello, um, I have a few questions about golf boarding. I'm still a little confused as to the process, how you would order the golf boarding, what the various ways. Do you have to go to the hotel somewhere? Do you do it online? Can you do it by the phone? Would it be delivered? Do you have to go and pick it up? And then can you clarify whether or not there is going to be the 205 at $12 or $3 available on the personal ticket? So and also, when can you start doing the uh, golf boarding? Like the All that stuff will be Why don't we start with the golf boarding? We don't, uh, I, we don't have a way of how we're going to solve for you. Um, we're working with MetroLinks on that, and this is between our partnership because, again, they produce the tickets, and again, what happens either is delivered or pick up a person, as Michael mentioned earlier. Um, yes, you are correct. Of all 40, we're asking our board to do a, the 205 $3 fare, so the equivalent of the ticket token price. Right? For the third part, but I can't remember. When, when, when will the ball boarding start? Um, so that's looking at probably, I actually don't know specifically, but uh, we're working through it. Spring. Yeah, spring. spring. And we will come out with the full information. Yeah, we yeah. have But if I may, this is, again, this is, this is part of the consultation. Consultation. 
So what we'd like is if you have specific suggestions of ways that we can ensure that, uh, you know, um, like we said, you know, there was a comment about making sure that there was a place people could go to pick them up and so on. So if you have specific ideas, please share them with the team so that we make sure that we incorporate those um, and, and, and don't, don't miss, miss something. Good. Thank you. We're going to go over here. Good evening. I just I have a bit of a concern with um, I'm following up from a um, earlier um, comment that was made on the use of data uh, collection with the presto cards, and it's uh, directly related to a response that I heard that uh, currently um, you can use the presto card and that you're not you're not going to be tracked or you can use it anonymously, and I just remember hearing um, on the news a while ago when I think probably closer to when the Presto system was ruled out on the news that the police actually yeah. was able, the police was actually able to, um, uh, they yeah. used the Presto data in, in order to track someone that had committed a crime. So I just want to know um, if you can let me know how, how you're going to manage um, the use, like how this information is going to be used in the future and if the police is going to have access to um, people's information when they're using the transit system, then I think that it needs to be shared with the public up front. Yeah, and so, thank you. so this is actually, this is from a uh, number of times this question. Uh, so, so today, uh, so first of all, the police don't have access to the Presto system nor the Presto data um, uh, as a regular course of business. The, the systems aren't open for um, anyone's use. That said, through a court order um, and for uh, as an emergency, there have been times when the police have asked uh, for um, a more often case, um, which happens maybe a handful of times a year, is uh, a missing persons um, a request when a child was missing, for instance, and they know that the, they know the number of the card, um, and so they're able to tell us the card specifically and, and, and be able to ask where it was last seen in the system itself. So we can do that if, if, um, if there's a specific reach out, but that's not something that's open for the use of, of the police. It's, it's on a very specific case-by-case -case basis, um, specifically because of your concern. Okay, thank you. Karen, I think it'll be you. There's also a couple of questions yeah, in the front. Yeah, up there after this one, and then I'll come back to you. Hi, uh, my name is Butterfly. And I, I'm uh, with Dana Finch Action Against Poverty, and, and there are many residents that, that made their two-hour trek down here on TTC, and we look forward to the two-hour back on TTC. Um, so I question where we are right now when we needed a consultation, when next month you're phasing out Metro passes, you're rolling out with all these big plans with obvious huge concerns from, from folks in this room. And in a city that's the fifth largest city in North America, to roll out on a transit system and only have one consultation in Toronto is also appalling. Thank you. So communities like Jane and Finch and Rexdale and Northeast suburbs, they're not here for their voices to be heard. And we demand a community consultation in the Jane and Finch community. Thank you. Yes. 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 Um, yes. And one in Scarborough. Please, yes, brother, sister, my friend. Yes, Scarborough. <laughs> okay. Uh, these communities are, are the most disadvantaged communities than where we are right now in the downtown core. And when we're talking about public transit and public services, we really need to think about accessibility. Amen. My community, in terms of accessibility, yes, we can't clap because yeah. you guys are talking about so transit true. and being seamless when what's happening is it's exclusionary and it's going to criminalize our communities. Yeah. Expiry dates of 30 days is going to criminalize a young person. We haven't even touched what happened with the young boy who got kicked off of a bus, a go bus, because the reader didn't read his presto card, okay? So we're not even touching the historical pieces that are still faulty today because we had how many delays on our way down here? Okay. Um, no, there's a question. So, um, okay, so in terms of the tokens and the tickets, 
communities and movements, Fair Fair, DTC Riders, Dave Fab, Folks of the Week, have been holding on and fighting for this fight around tickets, tokens, and metro passes. Low income passes. Low income passes. We don't know how it's going to roll out. I work in a local organization. And for you to just say we're going to get bulk $400 and then we administer it, or you're going to give us cards and we're going to kick money on the card, this doesn't make sense when we're working with people who are in extreme need day to day, moment to moment. And transit is the way that people move from a program to a service to a food bank to pick up their children from school. You are not creating accessibility in neighborhoods like ours and for people who are who are working for communities in this neighborhood. Yes. Okay, I think my final point is okay. if Jada Finch demands our own consultation, we will partner with our folks in Rexdale as well as folks in the East North. We deserve community consultations, and this rollout that you guys are doing needs to stop. You guys need to pause because it's going to impact people like us, everyday people, and the people that can't be in this room tonight. Yes. Yes. So think about it, because we need to have these consultations that are real, because what's happening now is a dictatorship, and you're telling us how a service is going to play and how we're going to pay for it. Yeah. And that is not a consultation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh. Uh, there, what was the question? <laughs> 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 yes, you're going to be on the Stop this metro pass. And the paper thing isn't going to work when we know it's environmentally unfriendly. And we got tokens. These things are so Buying four hundred. Why would you take down systems that are working and create systems that you're still figuring out, and it's gonna fall on our backs, the ones that use it. Thank you. Thank you. You have to respond to this. So we're gonna try. Person's gonna try. Can I have comment? So I think that's why we're here, and we're here to hear this feedback. And we don't. We're not surprised by many of the questions and the concerns that are before us. We share some of those. We're not saying that we have all of the answers, and we welcome the consultation. That's how we ended up here today. Just give us some you answers. You gave us a week to mobilize people here. This <laughs> was something community you go fought north. for. You gotta go to north and talk to people. You guys need to come to the community and say we're doing a consultation. Community yeah, fought for this consultation. So, Where are you guys? I, community fought for this. We absolutely hear you. I think you're seeing from the people on the stage, we are willing to come up for sure and do a consultation in your neighborhood. And come prepared, not like tonight. Come prepared with your figures. Thank you. For I can sake. go to the next question over here. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Um, before I answer, ask my question, I just want to circle back for someone's clarification <laughs> that according to CBC and the STAR, uh, 26 uh, inquiries were made on personal information on Presto cards uh, by the police and Metrolink supplied information, confidential information on 12 requests and do not require a warrant or a court order in order to obtain that data. So my question is actually about the Presto card uh, fair integration. You've shown us a schedule about the transition. But regarding fair integration, uh, Phil Verster in April, April 30th, mentioned uh, fair integration included fair by distance over 10 kilometers within the GTA. And I just want to know what the scheduled dates are for fair by distance over 10 kilometers within the GTA or fair by speed if the subway is or uploaded. Between the Thank you. Hours. I'll answer the question, but, um, but it, it'll be, I, I'm preemptively saying it's going to be an unsatisfactory answer. So, uh, uh, um, so uh, Presto doesn't set the fares into the individual transit agencies by their city council set fares. In the case of Go Transit, as mentioned, 
um, fare by distance uh, and a change of the fare table would, would have to come from the province. So uh, there hasn't been uh, yet a change of the fare table. Uh, and so um, likewise, we're, we're waiting to, to find out if and when um, a change will happen. No, so uh, so we so so Metrolinx. I don't speak on behalf of the the, the Gold Fair side of things, but Metrolinx does make recommendations uh, about uh, fair adjustments as a part of our regular uh, reports to board. That then um, that then we go up to the up to the process and transportation and so on. Um, but no decisions uh, in terms of a specific date of a change um, has yet been been announced. So it's seven twenty-eight. There's more questions. We want to get to the questions. Uh, we're going to keep going. Everybody's good to keep going. I'm going to hit one on the screen from an online uh, question. In relation to the Presto vouchers, can you talk a bit more about how that would work? Would we be able to load their card immediately or is there a delay? Is there a cost to the organization to be able to do this? Will this be available to most groups or just a very limited group of organizations or is the program? Yeah. So that's a lot of questions there. Yes. Um, so, Yes, there would be a bit of a delay in a similar format that you would uh, you would encounter if you were loading something by using our online channel. So if you were to go on the website and purchase a pass or have funds pushed to your card, the same type of delay would then also apply to the voucher system. Um, so there is not an immediate load necessarily. Um, yes, this would be available to most groups. Um, it wouldn't, it's not something that would be limited to organizations. That being said, though, it's something that's available to groups typically through working with um, the transit agency that's involved. Um, through some organizations and private industries, they would be able to work with Metrolinx directly. Um, for those private organizations that would work with Metrolinx directly, there, there could be cost involved to, to run the program. So. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. I know you've been patient to ask your question. Oh, oh sorry. Okay, so the question is related to uh, like an organization where we have a bunch of staff clients and we provide the token for appointment. So we'll give them the token, and then um, if they can't use tokens, then do we get a stack of tickets for them and then get a stack of tickets for them, like for each appointment? How does that work? Yeah, yeah. So Michelle, okay, and another thing. So oh. suppose a deaf client is on ODSP and so they're going long term and they're paying long term for trips. Um, How do, how do we give them long-term um, ability to, because before we gave them the tokens, how would we do it with the new system? Uh, yes, we'll take that. Um, so yeah, Presto tickets would be handed out like tokens, so one for one, if they're not going to be using it, if you, like, often. If you wanted to do something where it was like a... But it's the same price? As the to, if you're ordering it's the same processing? Okay, so it's the same price, right? Yeah. Do, do you want me to the one about the card? Okay, so yeah. for long term, you talked about long term, right? And so if you use long term, you might want to use something like the Presto card and pushing value to it, like we talked about using that Presto voucher system. Okay, so if... Um, so every once in a while, somebody um, just goes every once in a while on the TTC. Probably you're saying the ticket is the better idea for them, and our agency would make sure that we do that. So is that as a token? Correct. If that, if that works for you, and then we work with you and figure out what works best for you as well. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is over here. Oh. Hi. Thank you very much. This question is about seniors. Uh, the latest stats from City Hall unfortunately show that 50% of seniors living in the city are living at around $27,000 a year income. Uh, they are paying close to 70% of the money for rent. They're using food banks, they're using shelters. Uh, some of them may not even be able to get to the doctor or afford their medicines on that. And the TTC is essential and pivotal 
that seniors get to their doctors, get their medicines, continue to be engaged. And I'm just wondering, uh, seniors um, can't buy a $6 pass and then front load it with $20. You can't park the money that you do not have. And I'm just wondering whether you have like one ticket uh, sales at the discounted rates uh, for people so that they continue to live a quality of life in Toronto. They continue to keep engaged, uh, get their doctors and get their meds and have something to eat. Uh, it's really impractical and uh, it's unacceptable uh, that you have to pay six dollars for a ticket and park money on it when you are living uh, from hand to mouth at the yeah. poverty line. So hopefully you've got some programs uh, going that will deal with this growing body of people. It's 50% now and there's a generation of boomers who haven't saved enough either. So you should be looking at planning out about 10 years, okay, for increasing uh, downturns in the income and lots more people needing to stay connected. So maybe if you have any answers to that. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your question. Well, I think that that's, that's, those are very, very important issues and we have to be cognizant on those issues. I mean, there's a couple of things that are in place now. I appreciate that they don't fill all of the gaps that you've identified, but there is the Fair Pass program through the City of Toronto if a person is on OW or ODSP, and actually the City of Toronto is here tonight uh, to assist individuals with that program if needed. We are also going to be doing a complimentary, um, we'll be handing out uh, free cards through Toronto Community Housing for adults and seniors, so that helps with that six dollar um, issue, and then people can take that card and get the senior concession um, on their Presto card. And then with the Presto card too, you get the two hour transfer, which I think is a significant benefit for people who are doing those short trips, perhaps to doctor's appointments into the pharmacy. Yeah. I'm not suggesting that fills all the gaps, and I'm sure there there are other gaps that we need to think about. And, and uh, but I just want to let you know a couple of things that are in play now, and there's. We'll continue to work on that issue. It's an important issue for sure. Good. Thank you. Karen, I've lost you again. Oh, there you are. Good. So this is a similar concern to some of my colleagues in the room here. I, I also work for a not-for-profit, and I work for really vulnerable people in the city who are either living hard on the street or living in shelter with really, really complex health needs. My concern is for, for, for Leah when you mentioned that uh, there will be potentially a delay in loading the car. Uh, quite often when I'm doing work with somebody, it's, it's whatever I can do in that moment. And if I can get someone to a doctor that day, I'm going to do that. Um, I also work very closely in the work that I do with the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care, and we've done a lot of work over the past five, six, seven years to help move people who are using hospital emergency rooms um, for their, their, their primary health care uh, into more appropriate health care. And part of that work has been to help connect people with their doctor. And if I need to, again, if I need to get someone to a doctor's appointment and get them on the TTC to do that, I need to be able to have the resources to be able to hand someone a, a physical token or a physical means of getting them on to the TTC to get them to that appointment. Um, and I'm really concerned about the way the process is, is set up right now with Presto, that there will be a delay in getting them that resource. So it would seem that the ticket, and we, and we are happy to work one-on-one -on -one specific, to meet specific agency needs, because I appreciate that different clientele, different needs, um, and so we were more than willing to sort of think about what that needs to be for, for the people that are using your service. It does sound like from what you said that you're probably tickets is the best because then you can like a token or a ticket today, you can hand that to the person, you can give them multiples um, as long as they're, they're going to use them within the 90 days or the so one year actually you can buy them. So if that sounds like the solution for you, but again we are we are more than willing to sit down with anybody again also you know, the neighborhood consultations that we've been asked to do, we'll do that, but also if there's, you know, we want to get together and talk about the specific needs of a specific agency, we are more than willing 
and also to enlighten us into some of those gaps and some of those needs. And so it might be something like with the global planning with the regional network, we're not there yet, and we'll need your help. Thank you. We have a question in front here. So my name is Robin, and uh, I'm a person with a disability, so I use Wheel every day. So um, every day I use either a Wheel Trans bus or a Wheel Trans minivan. So one of the things that I experience on uh, the Wheel Trans vehicles is they have a handheld device, and uh, more often than not, the handheld device is not working. Okay? So great, I get a free ride. That's Oh, that's okay. But the thing is, I have, I have some fears that in time, I will get an enorm, a, a huge bill from Presto going, you need to pay for your trips. So that is a fear I have as a person on ODSP and a person of low income. That is a fear I have. And also, when it comes to when I need to load my Presto card, um, going to a machine on the subway is not wheelchair accessible, like I have trouble getting close to the machine, and I am not comfortable asking a stranger to help me get my, to get my, um, to get my card. So when it comes to doing independence, think about that. Make your machines more accessible. So when one of you said that you want to really talk to us about not, you know, look at the distance between where a person has to go to load the card, that is very important. And another thing is those paper tickets that you want to do with the chip, um, what about the people that have um, <coughs> sensory disabilities? So for somebody that's blind, somebody, somebody that's, that's like, has issues where they can't actually see it, so are you going to make those cards braille? So those are my questions. So if you can answer them, that would be great. Thank you. So there's a number of questions. There's a few like to So I'll, I'll we'll stress the wheel trends. We are aware that there are some issues with those readers, and we're working very closely with the folks at wheel trends to get those issues resolved. Mm -hmm. But I can assure you that if you tapped and it didn't collect your fare, we're not coming back to collect the fare. The, the equipment doesn't work like that. So you, uh, that, that, I can give you that. Do you want to talk a bit about accessibility? Yeah, sure. That's Sure. Um, uh, with regard to the, uh, the, the question about the machines, uh, I completely hear, hear you about the, um, your approach to those machines and the fact that there isn't uh, really a cut-in, unfortunately, because of just where the placement of the different vaults for coins and that kind of thing. Uh, why we try to uh, ensure that the controls are as low as possible, but I know they're not, they're not, uh, they're not, they're not perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we've been saying this from the outset. It hasn't changed. Yeah, so... No, no, it's a yeah, but she's asking the same question that's been asked since the outset of these systems about accessibility and how you pre prepare these systems, whether they're accessible or not. So saying the same thing, she's asking a question today that's been asked since the outset of this implementation. So what has happened since when accessibility needs are still outstanding? Right, so I was going to just say... There's, so the, the earlier machine that was put out was the sort of the baby mother machine, right? The, the, the smaller one, which uh, uh, is just used to pay, uh, to pay with a credit and debit card. Um, and then we have the larger one, which has the credit and debit as well as the, the coins. And that has the lower, the lower screen, which is, is a little bit easier uh, to reach for some folks. Um, that, that and both machines have an audio mode. Plug in a headset and we're going to actually give uh, actually the information. And so that's, that, that gets to, to, your, to, your, uh, to your last question there about how does a person um, under, uh, query their, their best of ticket to see what's left on it, right? Have, uh, it's a two ride ticket, am I using those rides? I've got two, no, which, one one is, which one's still available? Right, there's obviously not braille on them because how could we, how could we braille? <laughs> Right, if it's a two ride ticket, how can you be to say that to say that there's no ride left? So instead, you can just put that ticket into the machine that you bought it from, the FPM machine, and you can query on the screen or it will tell you in well, in audio what is left on the uh on the screen. Okay, thank you. Is it telling you how much is left now on audio? Hi. Uh, Sorry. Um, it, it's been touched on by, by a number of people about um, gates not working, fair readers not working. But I'll just tell you that uh, I, I work for the union that represents TTC workers, and we put a call out to our own members to say, what's the situation out there? And it isn't just the odd reader that's not working. 
readers are not working on buses, on streetcars, in stations, fair gates aren't working. Uh, people are, are recording the fact that it takes quite a long time for many of those things to get fixed. It's not our members that can fix it. They have to go report the fault. The fault maybe gets fixed in a few hours, maybe the next day. You know, that means that buses are, run, are running without fair gates working, uh, fair readers working. And uh, one reply we got was, oh, well, usually there's one on the bus that's working. Yeah, on a crowded <laughs> So, uh, a crowded bus on, at rush hour, you're going to push your way through to the back to tap your card? That's not going to happen. So you're, you're phasing out metro passes and you're changing over to a system. Fine. I, I went through that in Vancouver. It worked really well once everything was fixed. But it's not fixed and a lot of people are going to struggle to pay their fare uh, and there is the possibility of not having paid your fare and you're going to get a ticket. And a lot of people are very frightened about that. So, what's the story? Yeah, well, I'll take that. Again, I just want to emphasize what Kirsten said earlier. There, there will be no one coming after someone that has tried to pay their fare and could not because the machine was broken. And I will say that our fair inspectors, before they start an inspection activity on a vehicle, one of the first things they do is check to make sure that the equipment is working, to make sure that that situation is not happening. Uh, in terms of uh, reliability of the machines, obviously this is a very, very large and complex system. And our history has continuously um, been to continuously make improvements to the machine. So today, that most of our car reader faults are repaired overnight. During the course of the day, there are times when the machines will go out of service, but we have um, optimized our maintenance process such that most car readers are repaired in the overnight. And at this point today, what we're doing is where we can, if we have opportunities with spare vehicles, we will actually hold those vehicles at the car house or garage where the front reader is not working. And one of the main reasons we're doing that is because we do recognize that it's very difficult for a customer to get from the front of the vehicle to any of the rear readers and make their first engine. So those things are underway and those are part of our current business process. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Question over here. Uh, many people already asked many good questions, but I didn't see any clarity and commitment from all of you. So I'm going to ask three questions and I want your commitment and clarity on all these three questions. First question. Will you commit to make presto tickets widely available across the, the city, not just shop or drama? Second, will you commit to make presto tickets available at the current token, that means three or more, and ticket prices? Third one, will you commit to extend the expiry date past one month? Thank you very much. Thank you for your question. So there's a couple there. Can I just take the first one? Uh, so the first one was about the availability um, beyond shoppers. So, uh, so I, I'll say two things. One is we're committed to working with you, and, I, and that is sincere. Um, I, I, I specifically, we collectively wanted this session because we want to figure out how to address these needs. So, uh, so no, I don't have the answer for what that will look like, but availability or through social agencies and groups to be able to buy bulk. Um, batches of tickets is one option that we do know we need to put the process into place. And secondly, we'd love to work with uh, whoever is interested to figure out the, the geographic gaps. Um, I'll speak to the last question, which is about expiry. The expiry date it will, won't, isn't a month. It'll be a minimum of either uh, 90 days, so that's three months, um, or a year uh, if a lot involved. And then the and then last question. question is... Why the expiry date? So the, the, uh, the current plan and is that the, the single ticket that you purchase from the FDM for shoppers will be the adult fare. The, the concession or the lower fares will be available for people who purchase in bulk. So we take the comment back. I think we've heard loud and clear that people would prefer that the single ticket has the concession prices on it, and that's the feedback we're getting today. So thank you for that. But I, I think at this point, that's our plan, but we're taking that back. Uh, so we're going to come to the front. I know that gentleman's had his hand up for a while. Oh, sorry. Oh, just, he's next. Oh, he's next. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, hi. So I just want to reiterate the point about the uh, tracking of information. Again, it's not about personal data. Of course, we understand that we can travel anonymously. It's about tracking trends. That's the issue that my, that the woman in the back already mentioned earlier. Um, so I just want to ask again, what is the purpose of adding expiry dates to the tickets, firstly? Secondly, and I had this conversation with a woman who lives in my community yesterday, what is Presto doing? What is Metrolinx doing about the GTA passes? How, do you, how are you planning on serving those customers who don't necessarily work or go to school in Toronto but live here and they do need to travel outside of the, the yeah, outside of Toronto? Pass, um, and then beyond that, I'm talking, sorry, please wait. Um, beyond that, uh, who, oh sorry, with the consultation that you guys have committed to doing in other parts of Toronto outside of the downtown core, we also need you to commit to actually doing um, reasonable, out, not reasonable actually, meaningful outreach efforts to the people that live in those communities because I didn't know about this meeting, I only knew about it because of, like my friend or the woman in the back mentioned, because of organizing efforts from people in the community. I would not known, I would not have right. known about this meeting had I not heard about it from someone who lives in my area. Mm -hmm. So what type of efforts will you guys make to actually meaningfully reach the people who live in these communities and not just people who live in homes who have, you know, you can just drop the mail to their homes, but the people that are living in high rise buildings who are actually using transit a lot more than those people. So I need just need to understand how you're gonna meaningfully reach all of these people. Um, on top of that, I do have a presto card, unfortunately. <laughs> and um, one of my biggest issues with it, because um, when I run out of cash on my Presto card, when I don't have a Metro Pack loaded onto my Presto card, the system as it's set up is an accepted versus a declined method, which makes no sense to me. Uh, I grew up in Branton, Presto was launched in Branton, and what happened there was you would actually see how much money you have on your card when you would tap on. You would see how much time is left on your transfer when you would tap, tap on, so you would know how much time you have left. So what I'm trying to get to is, there have been moments where I've tapped on on my local bus route and I've been declined thinking I had enough money on my cart. And I just need to make sure that you're properly serving people because had that bus driver not been kind enough to let me get to the station and then load money on, I would have been stuck. So, so that's a lot of questions. I think I've got them. All right. I'll start. Yeah, I'll start. I'll start. I'll start. I'll start. Uh, so the expiry date, um, uh, the, system, the system keeps the information for, um, um, to ensure that if you're calling the call center, for instance, um, that they can query your card and be able to see uh, in the database that, oh yes, there's money on it, or in fact, uh, you were right, you, the money wasn't spent, and so it's a defect, and so to, to be able to actually see the information throughout the system. Um, uh, in, this is the first time that Presto will have tickets, so we've, we've had the cards, as you mentioned, in Brampton for, for years, and so we know how that works with tickets, this is new. And so we had to make a decision about um, uh, basically the, the cost of the overall infrastructure in terms of keeping all of that information. And so uh, we picked what we thought was a reasonable um, kind of balance of the cost of the, of, of, uh, you know, the IT costs versus the customer experience. And so that was how the 90 days and the one year was picked. Um, and as I mentioned, if, if you know, as we actually get real experience and, and uh, customer feedback of usage, in, um, of actual usage, as opposed to kind of that transition of moving from tokens onto the electronic ticket, um, then we'll, we'll have the information to know the true cost, which is an important part of the equation, as well as the real customer impacts, both positive and negative, which are equally important. Um, to ensure that we get the balance right. And if we need to change the technology uh, to, to make a longer date then, then we'll, we'll have better information to be able to do that. Um, with respect to the GTA pass, this is something that Presto today doesn't, uh, doesn't have, and we know it's very important. Um, it requires us to, to work with uh, all the transit agencies who participate to ensure that we build a product that um, works for everyone. Um, so we haven't done that. It's on the list of things to do, um, uh, but we, we don't have that in, you know, in the... Do you have a timeline? Because people are actually very concerned about this. Yeah, I, I, I don't. We're not eliminating the mm -hmm. state passes until we have a festival. Do we have a timeline, or...? No, we don't, and, but, uh, but we'll be working collectively. So they don't get their passes. Your GTA pass. Your GTA pass is still there. The GTA will be passed that's good for ground transit, just solid transit. You need to hire him. You need to hire him. <laughs> um, with respect to the GTA pass, 
expect in the displaying of the information when you tap, which is your fourth question. So the consultation, I, I, I agree. Um, uh, we need to we need to do better in terms of both the frequency as well as um, the way we reach out. And so I think we'll work to make sure that we do better next time. So um, both who, who we reach out to and as well the various modes that we kind of how we share information. Um, with respect to the screens, you're right, there's been inconsistency on um, how the equipment throughout the different agencies has um, has uh, been implemented. And so we're working with the TTC to see if we can update um, uh, the, the equipment so that they display more information and, and so that you can actually um, uh, get, get more information when you write and when you talk to them. Um. So, Karen, I'm going to stay with you because the gentleman behind you has had his hand up for it. And I got my hand up, but I would be on the camera while don't nobody talk. Oh, all right. We'll definitely get to you Hi, um, my name is Richard, and um, I first want to thank you for finally getting machines in the subway that work, because I went in there at least 30 times and my machine didn't work. And I repeatedly complained to Presto, I complained to the subway station, they said it was a constant <coughs> problem. But again, I believe that, as the lady said earlier on, she said about having more machines in a more convenient location for disabled. I am disabled. TTC has a difficult time in understanding the concept of disabled. The That's a truth. That's a truth. All buttons on the handicapped seats. So I have to get up with two steel plates in my spine, wiggle through people, shove people aside to get to a button that's across from the seat. Well, the car is moving. Now, is that safe? No, it's not. I think what that lady meant was, could you move that machine to the upper level in some of the stations that you can do that, like gun gas? The machine could be at street level. It doesn't have to be on the concourse. It might cost you a little more to run a hydro cable and, and the communication cables, but it would be much more accessible to the handicap. Why do they need to access every station all the time with faulty elevators and everything else that stands in the way of a handicapped person from getting from point A to point B? And the other thing that I said and wanted to say was that there was a lapse constantly. The Spadina line, I'm on it constantly the Union Station. Over 90% of the time, those small machines on the platforms aren't working, the machines on the cars aren't working. People are coming in and I'm having to tell them, oh, the machine in the back, I believe it's working. And then they have to wiggle all the way through to the back of the car. It's constant. It's, it's at least 80, 90% of the time the machines aren't working. And, and so they need to be working. They need to get a machine like the new machines that are working. And, and I haven't had a problem with them. And I love being able to put cash into them. Um, you know, and, but you know, um, the other problem that I have with Presto is correction of a misfare. Why would I be put on a wait line for 20, 25, 30 minutes to get money back that I should have never been taken from me in the first place? And this happened to me on a trip out to um, Canada's Wonderland, where the fare calculator said one fare, Presto charged another fare that was a uh, dollar fifty higher. Now, now, why should I have to be, be put on a wait line, given music that's slightly out of tune, just to annoy me <laughs> further, and, and wait and wait and wait to get my money back? Like there has to be another procedure, maybe an email with the, with the transaction information, and then reviewed, and then you just contact me back and give me my money. Thank you, sir. I'm gonna have to okay. stop for a couple reasons. Yep. One is we're definitely out of time. Yep. But we want to get you an answer. Well, I'll do two quick ones. On the streetcar vending machines, um, uh, as of today, all but one, like one, literally one of the machines has been updated um, uh, to improve the performance. Uh, we, as, as we've talked about in, um, recently, we've removed the credit and debit payment from those machines, uh, which has moved them from around 80%, 85% performance. Uh, so, uh, not 10%, but uh, still not good enough, um, to over 95 and hopefully in the 99% uh, performance. And they were just really not good enough. So we made the decision collectively to remove the credit and debit, um, and we should see now really proper performance. So we, we agree. 
Um, with respect to the to, um, customer service and getting money back, for instance, uh, so, uh, so uh, we do have um, um, prescribed kind of wait times for the call center. Uh, there are moments uh, when when it's not good enough, but we do have uh, service level commitments from our vendors, and generally they meet those. Um, that said, uh, you can email, uh, and, and I, I, the address, the address is on, available on postcard.ca. I can't remember it right now. Um, but also, uh, web chat is available. So if you're on the Presto website, the contact center can actually serve you via via the web chat. And um, right now, they can't do all the things they can do in the contact center uh, in terms of uh, calling, but they can. We're, we're putting in place more and more functionality so that they can actually do more of it online. So we're getting there. We're, we're, we're going to. So I'm going to take one more question. Before I do that, I just want to thank everybody for coming, and also the team, the person doing the captioning, and the science, and things like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. My name is Mike Sullivan. Um, I want to say also thank you to PTC Riders and Fair Air Corps. Don't leave. I'm looking for you. Okay? certainly didn't want to publicize the meeting. <laughs> yeah. That's the truth. So thank you very much, TTC Riders and Fair Fair Coalition. Yes, it was We're TTC Riders. Away. We're going to keep at this. There's been a number of issues raised that you don't have solutions for. For example, one of the things nobody's talked about, if I pay a cash fare, I'm a senior, on a bus, I can't get on the subject. i got to pay another fare because there's no transfers. Hmm. So i got to pay two fares to get on two buses, three fares to go on two buses on the subway. That's a problem. The fair dispensing tickets could be a concession fare. Yeah. You just don't want to do it. There's nothing stopping it being yeah, a concession fare. There's nothing stopping it being yeah. a senior or a student fare, but it's a cash grab. <coughs> you get an extra 25 cents out of drinking everybody, and you get an extra buck 20 out of the seniors and students by restricting them to an adult fare when they're entitled to a senior fare. That's wrong. That's something that's been said over and over again here, and it's a serious problem for people with really low incomes who cannot afford a Presto card or to put 10 bucks on it and leave it there. I'd rather eat. That's right. They would rather eat, exactly. Um, there are a number of, I had 15 questions here. You've answered some of them, but some of them you haven't. The issue of Shoppers Drug Mart being the only reseller, TTC's own report, which they adopted in June of last year, of this year, said there needs to be a minimum of 421 resellers in the city of Toronto. Shoppers Drug Mart has 135. Okay. Who are going to be the other 300 resellers? And I mean 300, because that's the minimum that TTC said was necessary to cover the city properly. Another question. The, um, there are no, what, what is the uh, Toronto Tourism Association saying about the fact that you're getting rid of the convention fair. You're getting rid of the family pass. Those things are going to disappear. Are there going to be replacements for them? Is there going to be a way to, to use one Presto card for a whole family? Right now, if you the Vancouver system was set up with, a, with about one-fifth of the cost of this system, and it's almost as complex. Yet in Vancouver, you can use a credit card to pay for a fare. You can get a concession ticket. You can get a. Um, uh, you can use your phone to pay for a fare. Just tap on the machine, and there it is. They, they, you can, they have wristbands. So the Presto card is actually a wristband in Vancouver. Well, it's not called Presto. It's called Compass. You can load your card using your phone. I understand you're working on that. But if you can load it with your phone, why can't I tap my phone on the Presto reader? Why can't I, as a senior? load just one fare on my phone yeah, and tap it. I, 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 know that ask, I know you have 15, but we do need to wrap for some of our Two other fare. questions. Will Presto be available on taxis? This kind of fare system is used on taxis all over the world. Why not Toronto? Will the Presto card be useful in other retailers? Can I use its cash? Can I just use it somewhere at the 7-Eleven or at a mom and pop store? And, in, in, uh, in Mount Dennis or Weston, mm -hmm. and will you keep talking to us? Is this consultation about the end of it? I understand you're going to have more, but at least please advertise them. And don't make these final decisions which you presented us as a fait accompli mm -hmm. until you've heard from everybody. That's all we have.
That still hasn't been answered, and maybe this lady can answer it. Because it, it's not clear. It has a limitation with regards to philanthropy as well, when you want to give people tokens on the street who may appear to be more visible. So we're questioning this method as to how it works, actually, because if you have a 90-day ticket, I think you're going to have some problems with your legal department, because someone has paid for these tickets, which are individual tickets, and it's similar to when you buy a, what do you call those things when you go shopping? Yes, you can. I'm like, I'm a, gift card? a gift card, yes. Oh, a gift card. Similar to a gift card where we have to take it to the courts and, and sue that when people 
put money on something for something, they don't expire. So when you have a ninth, somebody's paid for this ticket, social agencies have bought all these tickets, and there's a 90-day limitation, that means somebody has to pay attention to its expiring, which is an additional burden on these agencies and individuals when you give them out and they're not using them in a particular timeline. So when I was raising the question with regards to the environmental impacts, it sounds like you haven't done an environmental assessment on that. When I was raising the questions in relation to that, what you're saying is it's the same thing as the token. So what the, what is the need for these tickets? And especially because these social agencies, especially because these social agencies already have these tokens. Um, this you. That's me. Yeah, for TTC. Yeah, that's me. Um, okay, so let me see where I can, if I can try to unravel it and, and answer it as succinctly as I can. The if if a social so I think what we do recognize that social agencies will have different needs. So I think, for example, like a women's shelter might be better off buying presto cards that they could give to a family for you know for use. That might be what works for them. For the woman who works with people who are extremely disenfranchised. Could you have, ask your friend not to leave? The gentleman that's with the back who's it? Because okay. he said, you'll see me after, okay. and I don't want him to forget that. So if I work with 80 clients, and I give each Sorry, one of them this a lady's card? Right. We're still on the same phone so I, I only just asked you to stop your friend, but you didn't stop him. I just wanted him to get a heads up. I don't Grace know his name. I don't know him. Yes. Thank you, love. Sorry, so she's asking the question with regards to the tickets that we're talking about. It's more than one person in this conversation. Okay. So, sorry, so I'm, like, I'm new here, I just moved, so, um, so suppose I'm working with like 80 clients who uh, work in a month, who That's have to place. buy tickets, so like, you're saying I buy 80 Presto tickets, 80 Presto cards for them? Like I'm just trying to, I'm worried. So explain the situation again. Okay, for example, I have a client who comes to me and I give them tokens typically. Okay. And then, but, or then these change to tickets. So then, then the agency has to order both tickets. So, and do we get the, the tickets from TTC services? How do we do that? And so that's a change. And you were, and you were asking whether or not you have to order 80 cards? Yeah. Like, so everybody's going to have their own card? It will depend on the needs of the people that you serve. Like, for, like I'm thinking for a client who comes from single, right? Or somebody who comes from a family, or somebody who comes and goes to a workshop. Like, how do I decide what, who gets what? Right. It sounds, it I'm sounds just like, yeah, and it, this is a good, so it sounds like what your situation may require are individual tickets because your users are using them for individual rides. Okay, so with the tokens, I just gave it to the client right. one time, right. and it's a one time use thing. Right. But the tickets, is it one time use as well? Yes. No, it's a 90 day limit. That's the question. If you have a limitation period on a ticket, it's not similar to a token. There's a limitation. That means somebody's paid for something that could expire, and then therefore they're out of pocket. That's the issue. You have an expiry on something that someone's paid for, which is where I see a legal challenge because you're telling us a ticket is like a token, but it really isn't because this has so many barriers in place. It has barriers because it's not readable, so it's there's no, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, no braille or any kind of indicator on it. It has a limitation period. And furthermore, it l limits in a person's ability for charity. Right, and when you can just give to someone who may be homeless or a mom who just comes in, or you understand, that's the question with regards to this ticket system. That it seems to be a, a high barrier system, in addition to the fact that it's not environmentally friendly. So we're saying no. <laughs> that's what we're saying. But as everybody was saying here, you keep pushing issues as if it's a done deal, 
and we're saying, wait a second, you're just starting your consultations on these issues, you're having all these other things that you're wanting to implement, but yet these systems are not even prepared to meet the needs of agencies and individuals who currently use tokens to conduct business. Or cash fair. Or cash fair, yeah. That, uh, the tokens, most of the agency people use tokens and they don't uh, use them right away. They will save tokens for the winter because they know in the winter they can't get around. Oh, I, yeah. So can I speak? Yes. Can I get you to I actually gave out my last one. I apologize. You can, it's Kirsten Watson at TTC. Kirsten okay. dot Watson at TTC dot CA. Um, okay, so... For social agencies that use tickets or tokens to help their clients, so on a trip-by-trip -trip basis, I come into the social agency, I go to the workshop, I get the assistance that I need, and then I, the social agency would give me a token or a ticket to make that trip home, as an example. That is where we think, and again, it's a consultation with the individual agencies, that is where we think that that would be a suitable um, opportunity or suitable time that you would give that person a presto ticket, which is the paper ticket with the little chip in it. With respect to the expiry date, it will expi the plan that we're taking forward to our board in January. So there, you know, again, it's all subject to board approval. Currently, the plan is that that ticket will have a 90-day expiry date. If you buy in bulk, which many larger agencies will be able to do if they buy a minimum of 400 tickets, that those tickets will take a year to expire. So to your point about people, you know, grabbing a bunch of tickets from a social agency or from somebody who's, you know, giving them tickets, they will, if, they, if they're from a social agency that bought in bulk, they will last a year. Now, the issue about, you know, I have this ticket in my pocket, the ones that are purchased in bulk will have an expiry date on them. They will not have it for the individual tickets, which we recognize is, is a big problem. So I get that. You have 12 tickets in your wallet, you're not sure which one, you know, expires next. However, if the ticket has expired or, you know, is, is momentarily going to expire before you can use it, our intention is to have an exchange program where you will be able to bring that ticket in. So if you haven't used the ticket within a year, if you haven't used it within 90 days, you can bring it in and it'll be a one-for-one -one exchange, like for like. That is that is the, the plan. I appreciate it's not seamless. And it's a burden. It is, indeed. It's an, di an additional agree. barrier. Pardon? It takes you a ticket to go get it. Yes, a good point. Two tickets. Good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. Right, good point. Right? So the question is why an expiry period and why the need for, again, these these uh, tickets that are not economically friendly when we already have tokens that work exactly, in, if not better. So we, I mean, I think there's a, there's a, the, the expiry is, I mean, Annalise explained it a number of times, I think, tonight, but the expiry is... Not really, once. Okay, well, I'll, I'll try to explain it. The, the expiry, the reason that we are being implementing an expiry date is simply from a technology perspective is that um, it cannot hold all of the data for these tickets forever in, in, in infinity. All so technology all, can be written that way. It can. So we, our best practices review when we look around the world, expiries, that's the way these tickets work. Somebody mentioned Vancouver as a model. That's a one day expiry. Expires one day. We don't accept it. The point is, is that technology can be made that it's limitless. That's what technology is. It's something that you write, you code that system. Okay, well, I, mean, I appreciate I think, everything you've said, Kirsten. I am for and pushing for a fair free TTC. That is our plan. Uh, we don't agree with this push. I don't know who's we, sorry. We as the public. We, we don't. Public. Yes. Okay. Yes. Taxpayers. So we don't. We don't agree as, with as this I, system being forced on us. Um, and we're against that. So when we're asking these questions, because you don't have answers yeah, that we I, seem I, to think, why I, are they I, thinking that we okay, should just I accept this? Just be really clear. Yeah. I don't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here. 
I mean, there seems to be this resistance to the fact that we actually are trying to consult. I think we, it was clear that someone made mention that TTC did not advertise this. In fact, it was just last night on Twitter, I asked TTC, I said, hey, I can't find anything on your website about this town hall, but I've seen that TTC Riders has published this. Do you guys have a link for your well, TTC? We they didn't have any. Okay, so I'll be take that back. We were working with TTC Riders. There was no attempt to mask that this was happening tonight. Uh, Matt Galloway this morning on Metro Morning said, come on down. You know, we were part of that. So, Which is the day of. I take the comment. Yeah. But we're not on our TV. No, no, I agree. I'm, I'm taking the I, I, I take the comment. Can I grab you for a moment? We just, uh, Global's been waiting. If we can do that for a minute. One more thing okay. I want to be aware of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not assaulting you. Um. No. But the stars. Maybe one day you can come to me, or I can go to your agency. Right. Gift cards cannot expire. That's correct. This is a similar idea. And we have the next public. You're right. I take a different issue. I got to talk to this gentleman here. I take that one, but it's we we all consider it. So I'm just being honest. I'm being forthright with you. Or okay, yeah. You send me an email. I will answer your email. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I, if you send me an email, then I, I can deal with that. Yeah. Sister, so, sorry, what did the FVM stand for? Because uh, it's never... vending machine. Ah. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> We're not going to allow it. That's all there is to it. Do, did I figure out how people? No, they don't. I mean, I have a bunch of tokens because that's like an insurance that if I don't have a card, that's right. That's it. Yeah. They never thought that was a possibility. Yes. Very good point. Very good point. I'll be right back. I'm coming. I just heard you talking. Yes, I did, but I, I heard you talking. I just want to tell somebody we're taking her. I know. Sure, no problem. Go back to the So before you leave. $6. What is it? It's a press Aaron. card with $6. How are you doing? I'm good. How are we're, you doing? We're pushing for fair free TTC. But I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. put this in yeah, the frame. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a city in Ontario. Thanks, Ron. Run, run, run. Oh, run, 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 run. Oh, we lost it. Take, you would want to take a bus. I think it's for safety. Anyone giving things that they have no horn? They need horns for safety. They are loud. Democracy will outlive them too. I have faith in it. Will outlive, it will outlive them. It, it's a lot older than them, and it will outlive them. They go way back to the Greeks, I believe. Absolutely. Absolutely. It will outlive them. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you for You're your welcome. smile. Absolutely. I needed a smile. Thank you. Those are free. Did you have you, a question, Mark? Yeah, you had a, a budget question. I, I, I did. Yes. Did you have a? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm um, sorry. Okay. About your like, I mean, T T C is that insisting that the tickets are similar to tokens, so that I, I just want to comment that they are not at all similar. Because like, like, I'm not sure if you're aware that a lot of people keep tokens because in case they don't have the tickets. They have the little token in their wallet or the purse um, as like a backup. But like if if tickets are going to expire, then they cannot give you a backup because like you never know. Like I, I 
couldn't find a bad metro pass like just a few days ago. And I used the token. Mm -hmm. I don't know that token was from like two years ago. Like how am I going to make that work if tickets expire after 90 days? I don't even know if they're expired. Well, you can check the expiration date simply by putting a ticket into one of the vending machines and it will tell you what's still available on the what ticket and what the expiration date is. Yeah. Which is the access issue that we've talked about. We have to fix that. And we recognize that. There's 135 shoppers drug mart locations throughout the city. That's about a third of what we need. Yeah, that, that right? Which is a big reason why we're here today. Like we have circled spots in the city that we think are very bad open areas. But we want to hear from you and make sure that So the, I don't know I don't know if you heard us, but we're we're all about fair free TTC. So we're really going to demolish and abolish this system. We don't think that it was something that Toronto wants. Wanted. It was forced on us, mm -hmm. um, and we In don't terms think of the system. Mm -hmm. absolutely. And so we're not. We don't want this. That's, that's just. It comes down to that, right? So we don't want you to keep spending more money, which is why I asked about cost because I'm all about the numbers. Yeah. Um, and so when you were talking, about, this is your TTC. Mm -hmm. This is your um, budget, yeah. and this was from June 12th. Yeah. Yeah. This is where I'm telling you that it's 288 million dollars that you prep spent on the gates thus far. Yeah, so this is why I'm surprised no, you said no, something pull, about 50 pull million. That up and I'll clarify. It's all here. It's all. No, this no, is the pull, documentation. But find the 288 million. It's you have to add up all the figures that you put in here, and that's the 288 million. Well, let, let me show. No, so if you go back to the front, there's a financial section. No, it's about uh, two it's, pages it's in. It's 21 pages. Yeah, but go back to the front. Yeah, I just sure. want to draw your attention to that. Uh, so yes. one more screen over. Yes. So I, I wrote this report. Okay, well and, then and, you should know yeah, it. Exactly, and I do know so it. How so how come you don't know about the 288 I, million? I, I do. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna explain. So one more over. Yes. And uh, this. Legacy production. See, because you Press can only see so the this, figures down here are amounting to 119 million down here. No, no, no. What what this is? First of all, this is our ongoing operating costs. I understand. Up, right. This is not costs associated with rolling out Presto. This is just our cost to run the organization. I'm going to show right? you where you say that. Right. Okay. So because I, I have go, it's, uh, it's it's back here. It's highlighted. Legacy fares. So Presto fees up there. These are all ongoing. Right, but we're looking at just the gates. Yeah, exactly. But I'm not only looking at the gates. Yeah. But I was asking about two date costs. Yes. For all of it. Yes. So it's 47 million was our budget to roll out okay, Presto and then the look. gates. Fair gates. It's already more than your 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 uh, 50 million there. You see, it says 60.9. Mm -hmm. Then it says to December 27. Because this is an old report, right? Yes. This is that's 41.8 million. Right. And the balance to be spent, right? It so it's 19. saying the total is 113 yes. million dollars. That's only for this information, mm -hmm. okay? Exactly. And that's it. That's what I was referring to. When you asked me the first question, you asked how much was the Fairgate budget? No, I asked. I already know right. that it's cost us 288 million dollars as of June this year. Mm -hmm. I said, what is the the cost to date? Mm -hmm. Not only of the Presto gates, but the whole bringing out of this Presto system. Right. That's what I asked. So that cost has two parts, which is. And so you already see that 119 is more than the 50 that's million the that you mentioned. That's the budget. If you go back to. One second, I'm yeah. going to take you right yeah. to where you because okay. this is your own document. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. um, where you highlight it at the end, where you talk mm -hmm. about TTC is only responsible for the gates. Mm -hmm. And I have it even more highlighted because yeah. I ran for mayor, oh, yeah. and so I highlighted yeah. all these figures okay. Okay. Um, because I really am pushing for a fair free TTC. Okay. Based on the amount of money we spend on maintaining barriers, we can actually do a free system. Yeah. This maintaining barriers is not cost effective. It's actually expensive, and it warrants issues with regards to the criminal justice system, which are unnecessary. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, this is where I'm saying we're not looking at the whole picture. We're getting into... I the, know that it was on the end. Okay, you know what? Yeah, I have I it right here. I think it's back to where your page was. I highlighted in any event, yeah. right on the next document, because okay. that's what I posted online. Okay. So, this here, you say, see how it's highlighting the different things? Talks no, about you pass. That's just you pass. Right. Yeah. It's talking about you pass. Right. Um, and then it talks about. So there's figures that I've added up, right? Uh, you see. had 244 million. I don't, we'd have to sit down. I can tell you that the cost for implementation are these numbers right here, the life-to-date cost. 
we had a budget of, it's up to 52 now, I think I quoted 47 when I spoke to you. That's the Presto rollout. Uh, you're going to skip ahead here. Okay, sorry. So there's two things. There's a cost, whenever you're building these systems, there's a cost to roll it out, right? The cost to buy equipment and the cost to install stuff. That's what these numbers are showing you. The top figure is our cost to help Metrolink to roll out the Presto system at the TTC. The second line item you have there is the cost for the Fairgate rollout. And that's why I refer add those two together. And, and I said you got 47 million for our own cost. It's actually 52 plus the 50. We, we didn't spend, we haven't spent the 60 yet. We've spent, we're, we're beyond the 41. You we're have spent more than the, 50, the 60 on the Fairgate. No, okay, no, we, let me turn no, to it. No, we've, we had 19 there, and I'm pretty sure the 41 is now up to around 50. So I think this is where it says, while the TTC owns and is responsible for fair gates, Metrolinx is responsible for all other Presto equipment, right? right? So then that's where you highlight that you're responsible for the gates. And then there was the, the indicator where I went back and looked at how much you said it's been spent for the gates. So, excuse me, guys. Which is that oh, number? Yeah, right. go ahead there. Yeah. Which right. is that 60 million is the budget. Right. Last year, in 2017, we said we'd spend 41. I think this number is closer to 50 now. Okay. And we have about $10 million left from our budget. So you're That's saying you have not spent 60 million on the fair gates? No. No, absolutely in not. In implementing them or repairing them, fixing them, all of those costs you have not spent? So there are two things now. Okay. There's the implementation cost, which is a, which is a capitalized item. Yes. Then we have people that work at the TTC and part of their job is just to maintain equipment, whether it's fair gates, whether it is turnstiles, that is, so those are operating expenses. Right. If you add the two together, yes. and maybe that's where you're going with your I question. I am. Right, okay. So it's the so overall cost. So how much cost. have we spent today? Those numbers, if you scroll back. No, but these are yeah. old figures from June, so we yeah. spent more. That's why I was asking the to-date cost. Yeah, you, you And have, you're the guy that prepared this, so you must be yeah. the guy who knows about this, right? Yeah, so I know that there's a cost to actually install the equipment yes. and to roll it out, and then there's just the ongoing operating cost. Mm -hmm. The ongoing operating cost, I'd have to calculate separately for you. Is there a way that you can actually let me know the cost to date, yeah. all of it, yeah. maintaining, fixing, repairing, and also installing, because you still don't have them installed everywhere. We don't want you to install them. I had an the, argument the with gates, Andy Byford about this. They're installed because everywhere at this point. They, uh, they still look like they're... No, there's Yorkdale. Yeah, be Yorkdale done. is still being constructed. But the point is, is that I said to Andy that these gates are discriminatory in that you have one or two gates that are, quote, accessible and the rest are not. Mm -hmm. And I said to Andy, shame on you, because I said, and this is before he left mm -hmm. the TTC, I mm -hmm. said to him, these gates are just, you wouldn't hear from me, Andy, had these gates not been discriminatory, but they are. They're discriminatory in that you have specific gates identified. So when those gates are broken, they're no longer accessible. Do you understand? And yes, they're, so they're, they're the, two, the gates the often. wide aisle gates. They're often broken because most people psychologically want to go through a wider opening right. than try to squeeze through a smaller. Right. But I, you know why that is. We have throughput egress requirements to, in order, and these are building code requirements that are required in order to get a certain number of people through that physical space, which is a fair line. In order to achieve that, we maximize the number of wide aisle gates that we could put in. And then the other gates were just filling gates, basically to get us to that egress requirement. I, I didn't understand what you just so said. What I, what I mean is, based on the loading volumes and the amount of people that are coming through the station, in order to satisfy the building code requirements, we need to give a specific amount of space at the fair line to get everybody out safely. So what we did was we took that maximum space that we had to have there, and we put in the greatest number of wild aisle gates that we could have. So you're saying the number of wild gates yes. is uh, a limitation based on the code? It is based on the physical space we have for that entrance, if you follow what I'm saying. So for so, example, yeah. most TTC entrances yeah. are from that platform, the collector so let's, booth. Say, let's say to this white thing, so the width right. of it, yes. where you've set up these gates. Right. Are you saying it's within that width space that you're limited to put a certain width? Yes. Why? Because I, I'm asking, is that according to code? It's like, a, it's what a is building that? code requirement. For instance, in this building, I think they said we allowed 200 people that can sit in. That's a building code requirement. Right. And why do they limit 200 people? Because you have one, two, three, four exits. So in an emergency, the building code says you have to be able to clear this physical space in here within a certain time frame. The same thing applies to TTC stations. 
we have loading requirements based on full trains coming in and coming out, we have to be able to demonstrate that within a certain amount of time, we can clear out that right. entire so station. Right, so would it not make sense? I'm sorry, what is your name? My name's Alan Foster. Alan Foster. Mr. Foster, yeah. thank you. I'm Alan sorry, I didn't bring, a, I didn't bring a business Alan card, Foster? but it's a pleasure yeah. to meet Alan. you. Yeah. Two L's? Two L's and an A-N. A-N, yeah. Foster. Yeah. So A-L-L-A-N dot Foster at ccc ca. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so we encourage your feedback. So well. Alan, then that would say then it would be better not to have gates at all. Oh. Yes? Well, so that people can get in and out quickly and safely, right? I, I can't speak With regards to, that to the fire code? We have to collect fares. No, no, but I'm saying it would be better if, to not have gates at all in order for the egress to be accessible and people get in and out without limitations. And I would say to that, but we have to collect fares. So without no, no, some we sort actually of gated don't control? have to, but I'm just asking, uh -huh. not about your collection, because I'm just talking about the gates in itself. Mm -hmm. And you're saying there are limitations because it doesn't matter about the width of the gate, it just says, well, it does matter about the width of the gate, because you're saying you couldn't have five wide gates, right. you have to have so many gates, right. including that. Yeah. So wouldn't it be better that there are no gates yeah. at all in order to allow the egress and people to freely move in and out? Sorry to interrupt. It's just that they're taking down frames yeah. and stuff, it's not safe to be in here. Okay. Sure. So if you, sure. you can carry on the conversation outside, sure. I just don't, I'm uncomfortable with sure. being in here. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to leave you my con. I've got to pick up sure. my son. Sure, I understand. Um, but, but you no, understand what I'm saying? No, I see where you're going. That's a question that I think is well above this you room in terms of whether we should be collecting yeah, fares or not. Exactly. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm going to usher you. Out, keep ushering you. <laughs> Thank you. You're, you're good usher. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I have an office at Davisville, and does Kirsten uh, Watson have an office yes. at Davisville? Davis Thank well. you. Do you have her contact information? But you're the budget guy. No, I'm the pencil roller. I actually don't work in oh, finance. You're going to lose your job soon, brother. We're trying to get rid of Preston. I'm not worried. But you're the pencil roller guy for TTC. That's what we're trying to get rid of. Yeah, you're going to lose your job. He's the pencil roller guy. And what is your name again? I was at the mayoral debate. Dion Renee. Dion? Yeah. D I O N E. D exclamation mark O N E. Yes. D exclamation mark O N E. Yes. Uh, then what? Uh, Renee. We're moving. Renee. We're moving. Yes. Hi, brother. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. You have your Hi there. Good evening. Yes. Have fun. It's going. It's going. Yeah. Which I can. Okay. So, Mr. Foster. I now know it. Alan Dot Foster at TTC Dot CA. But the thing to keep in when you're asking these from. Budget people, like there's an operating budget, which is just oh yes, yeah, I understand capital, all that. I'm right. talking about listen, right. people just want to know how much is it costing us. Right. That's what it comes down right. to, right? Yeah. And what I'm saying is, is that TTC has enormous costs to maintain barriers, and these barriers hinder community wellness, accessibility, access. It hinders all of these things. And so what I'm saying, when I've said it before, that there is no need for us to be paying because we already pay it through our taxes. The pro it's already paid through profits, right? That You got it. Two, two ends and an ELA. So we're already paying for it. That's why I'm saying, if you're the guy that's the Presto rollout, you're going to lose your job because we're going to do fair free TGC and we're going we're gonna to need the Presto. But you I'm, seem like I'm, a nice guy and I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned. I've become I'm a movie actor. I'm oh, okay. okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'll be okay. Very good. I'll Listen, okay. so I put now, all of this on my YouTube channel. Yes. So thank you for sharing that information. Okay. Um, but as you could hear tonight, that it seemed like the room was not prepared, yes. uh, meaning the people on the platform not prepared to ask, answer questions, wasn't yeah. very uh, informative in the sense that you weren't inclusive uh, by way of advertising the information, giving people enough notice about it. The room wasn't even filled. Usually TTC meetings are filled. Yeah. And it was only as a result of TTC writers sharing the information that many of us knew this information. So TTC has been notorious for doing the exact same thing. It's the same comments over and over again. Nothing has changed, and that is the problem. When we talk about accessibility needs and that your systems are not available for people who uh, are either using wheelchairs or mobility devices, scooters for that matter, who can't reach because they can't stand, it's problematic. And that is not something new. It's the same thing. Did you change the gate readers? We, we did. We, when? 
the card readers on the gates, we have a facility for two readers, basically. There's going to be one that is within the accessibility height, and then there's going to be a lower reader installed. A lot of this work, we actually consult with our ACAT DRS oh, no, subcommittee. But Adam, yep. I just asked Adam whether or not the system, even consulting with ACAT, ACAT sometimes feels intimidated by the very people who they're part of the board members for. And I keep saying to them, don't be afraid to speak up about the issues that are affecting your life. I can tell you. The readers, not shy. Well, you, you had a question. Adam had a question. What was your question, brother? My question was, it was more about the, with the elimination of the tokens. And, uh, every other, every other time they've done a fair chain, there's always been an amnesty or exchange of your fair media. And my question is more. Uh, because I heard that they uh, had decided not to do an, uh, an amnesty of tokens for um, to reimburse people. But if they aren't going to do that, I want them to figure out what they are going to do if the, and actually advertise it to the people so that anybody that's collected them over the years know that they've either got to be used or they're going to be wasted and not just secretly leave it quiet actually tell them what's in and so and advertise it everywhere don't just expect people to read the news or the newspaper even tell the people the tokens are either use it or lose it or if they have decided they are gonna do um an actual token fair exchange then tell tell people that but don't just think act like oh nothing uh, not, we don't have to do anything because you have to edu you know educate and and not just think Metrolinx is gonna do it this way or you know right. it's kind of actually all be uh, communication over this whole process has been a very, a very much a weakness you know I wish Heather is our communication specialist. She only Who works. is Heather? She just left. Uh, she was walking with Kurt Sim. She, she all she platform? does. No, she wasn't on the platform. Mm. All she does is press their communications. Yes. And we've hired her specifically to deal with this issue. In terms of refunds, there will be a refund process for tickets and tokens. One of the things that uh, you probably didn't catch that when Michelle said, part of our board report for January is to request approval for this refund process. And essentially what you'll be able to do is show up at Davisville and or five subway stations. you will be able to bring in your tokens or your tickets and you will get a refund or an okay. exchange for those. Because um, I did get in the light. So now that I know that that is... But we I, have to get approval for that. Right? But, but now that I know that that is, then that means I can fire up my deputation fingers and be deputing on that item to say that this is what is needed. No, absolutely. Well, you know, the report will come out before the meeting, so there's lots of opportunity to think about what you want to say yeah. in, in the board yeah. meeting forum, and we welcome that. Yeah. But again, we're bringing that forward as our recommendation. The time frame is in the report, the, the process is in the report, and we encourage feedback um, at that board meeting, should you have something to say to the decision makers. But there, there will be a process. We have a lot of subway stations and there were no ads up in how Metrolinx combined and Presto were going to work in combination with TTC. I have been asking individual TTC employees for two to three years now to explain Presto to me and I was getting stonewalled because they were saying we don't know the answers. You hadn't either you hadn't told them the answers or you told them to tell the public there are no answers yet. So I, I 
can tell you that we, we, we have told them the answers. We publish well, information they were, they for were telling our us. collectors. They we have publish not. notices for it, it. I mean, we have 8,000 operators and collectors but combined, the, and it, maybe that message is not getting to the, all of them, but I can assure you that there's an aggressive campaign internally to get this information out. The TTC people in behind your ticket kiosks, the collectors, the yeah. collectors mm -hmm. who told me the truth mm -hmm. in the last three to four months, they have said, but don't describe what I look like to anybody. <laughs> Don't tell TTC head office that you spoke to me. I said, no, you'll be anonymous, but you'll be a source. I have someone who has read at Bay Station within the last three months and said those exact words to me. I don't want to be involved. They were afraid they would get fired for talking to me, general public, about this. Excuse me. So they, they, shouldn't, they should not have that fear. They I've, had it. I've worked they have it. They have it now. Right now. Right now. Exactly. Right now. I'm not saying right now. exactly. Your streetcar drivers are wondering. I've oh, and that's there, the thing that I want, I'm years. thankful that you said streetcar because you do not have a cash fare payment on your streetcars. No, I was on one on, say, no, on no, they don't. the well, diner the or St. Clair. The, the new ones. The new the new ones. ones. You do. You take your cash I didn't fare. see any. I'm there's looking. There's, I don't on, see there's any. a machine. There's on a machine. The king, on the King yeah. Street. No, I was on St. Clair mm -hmm. and I did not see one. There are two machines on board every new streetcar near the wide doors oh, right is it near, not near the accessible entrance yes. so, so i'm look, literally looking and I, sh I said to myself i should take a picture of this I've, and i didn't see anywhere that you can pay a cash yes. fare so i was waiting for some guy to stop me and say hey you didn't pay your fare and i'm going to say well how do i do that yeah. when you walk through that accessible door in the d module right in front of you you will see a machine that will accept your cash fare payment and it will issue you a receipt that what's says the, you've made your fare what's payment. What's the D module? Yeah. It's the front, it's the accessible door. I think that's what you said, right? We just call it the D module. It's the, by the driver. It's no, no, it's you. Yeah. It's the second door in. The first door is a narrow door and the second door has a double door entry. That, then second you have the, door back yeah. from the head of the train. Exactly, right where the accessible seating is. Right beside it, you will see a machine and that, that says one pay has your fares. For coins. You like, can, can pay you pay coins, a token? You can pay with Because I'm yes. looking and I didn't see it. You can All I saw was it mm -hmm. talked about TTC. There were mm -hmm. two machines. Yeah. And it looked like one was a reader and another that you can yeah. use a debit card right. or a so credit card you, or load it. So you can pay with tokens. You can pay with cash. And if you have a TTC ticket, yeah, there's a little red box that will validate it. Where does it show that you. Oh, you can validate your ticket? Mm -hmm. Your TTC ticket. Because I asked yes. a TTC yeah. driver, I said, mm -hmm. Do I need to do something? Cause a guy that was probably mm -hmm. going home or something, I said, is there something I need to do with this transfer? And he said, no. No, no with the transfer, you've already paid your fare. Right, so from you, the subway. Yeah, exactly. So that's your proof of payment. You don't need to pay an additional fare. But if you're paying for the first time when boarding the streetcar, right. you have a ticket, your token, or your cash, you put it into the but machine. But I was looking and I didn't see. But have another look. It's right, it's right in front. Where, and there are two machines. Is there a token machine that you can stick the token in? So, so it's one machine that will accept your token and or your cash payment. And right beside it is a red a little red box. That's where you validate your TTC ticket. And it will accept all three of those forms. Wait a second. Payment. When you say validate the ticket, mm -hmm. that's where I'm getting confused right. again. Mm -hmm. well, your TTC okay. ticket. So if you have a paper ticket. Because you're a senior I'm or a student. Oh, yeah, only you know, if you're a senior or a student. Oh, well, yeah, we have tickets as well. Yeah, it punches oh, it and it dates time since to say that that ticket's no longer uh, usable. Okay. But you can use all all three of those forms of I'm payment. I'm going to look again because I didn't see it and I said, oh, okay, Absolutely. I'm waiting for somebody uh, to come up to me. It's this there. There's two of them. It's a challenge for many people. Yes, it's way it is. too much of a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And when people have cognitive challenges, it yes. becomes even more difficult. Yes. It's not clear. Yes. Right? Uh, absolutely. No, absolutely. It's not perfect. You can be okay. Absolutely. Uh, that's where Fire Free reduces all of these barriers. Okay. We're pushing for it, Mr. Foster. Yeah. We're yeah. pushing for it. Yeah. So okay. I have my okay. private and professional right. opinion on that <laughs> one. I'm sure you do. Right. You may not want to share the private on here. No, I, I don't think it'd be. I don't know world-class agent that's done that. They're talking about it, but well, I, you have a, you have many countries, uh, over a hundred and some odd countries around the world who are doing that, okay. and the, many of them are world-class. New York City is considered to be world-class. Calgary is considered to be world-class. Montreal, no, there's certain areas that they have fare-free okay. transit. Yeah, okay. I will. I will send you the aware. link. I, it was all in my. Are you are you Torontonian? 
that. Okay, well, that's but the I, I, live, I work. It was here. all in here. my ads for advertising yeah. for campaigning. Well, I, I, I saw some of your. your yeah, videos. so that information is there, yeah. um, and I'll, I'll even send you the link directly. But it is possible, and when you look at the economic oh. factors, it actually increases the economy because you're getting more people using the system and going out to make purchases and feeling comfortable to go and shop because they don't have to calculate am I going to use this amount of money for my groceries okay therefore I can't go you know all these things that people are always calculating you also look at the factors where people now can go visit people and spend time with people and socialize so you're looking at the whole community wellness aspect and then you're also looking at we take away now those costs of criminalizing people for being poor do you understand? Just because they can't afford to travel from A to B, we're going to criminalize them, put them through the justice system that costs us over three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars for a fare of whether it be three twenty-five or whatever the fare would have been. That's ridiculous to me. So when you look at those impacts, seniors who just stay home in January. Right. I, I'm, I'm not wanting that. We're trying to look at social inclusion, and that is a fundamental issue when we have these barriers that we keep putting up. And really, I want to divert those costs towards accessibility and increase our transit systems so that we can provide service. There's an absolute and clear business case for that. I agree. I will email you, sir. All right. Yeah, I've seen you at ACAT. What is your name? Alan Foster. No, I used to be at ACAT. I'm now with TTC Riders. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. But no, ACAT really helped us to decide Somebody where to Somebody took my hand and gave me this what one. is your position on TTC? So I'm the project manager for the rollout at TTC. <laughs> oh, for the rollout? For the rollout on TTC. That's why we said, sorry, sir, well, you're going to lose your that, job because we're okay. going to get rid of Barstow. Okay. That's, okay. that's okay. That's okay. I'll become a singer when I'm finished. Oh, yeah, I think you may need <laughs> That's great. Right. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm Good enjoy to see you, Adam. Okay. Oh, yes. yes, love. Thank you very much. Folks. Thank you for your time. So Let me just pause this, Adam. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Yan Richards. Okay. Yeah. Uh, look, we, 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 I'm sorry. We, we, of course, hear complaints. We, I'm, I'm you know, trying very hard to, to get there. We work with uh, groups like uh, we, we have a MetroLink Accessibility Advisory Committee. We have the TTC ACAT. Group, are you are you on the ACAT group? I was on ACAT years ago. Now I'm doing, you know, TTC writers. So Maybe more Fletcher you know. counselors. But you cross out your number. I'm gonna call you. Yeah, yeah. But you cross it out. Oh, oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'll just cross it out when I'm gonna make it um, public. But for now, I'll just I'm gonna, Thanks, sister. Once I see, I'm gonna apply for that. So, so we 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 always get in testers, and we accessibility is built in from yeah. into the. Uh, it's been a long day. I get you. Thank you, Ben. Penny. Be well, sister. Into the requirements, into the build. I, I do a lot of testing. We, we get uh, we get our user testers in. So, I think we're getting there. But are the the payment systems now with Braille? So there's Braille uh, labels on uh, all of the, um, the uh, load machines. And is it audio that it speaks back to you? Because yeah. you mentioned that you have to use a special phone for that or connect no, something. No, no, what were you saying? Most, pe it's most people, it's most it's blind it's people, it's not, it's because they need to at ATM machine, carry around a pair of earphones. Just the, just the normal standard earphones. Yes. And they plug yeah. those yeah. in um, to like ATM oh, machines. I see. Don't know. It's, it's sort of standard. Uh, they carry them around. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, and it's with this Presto system as well? Yeah. It's set up for that? Yeah. So they plug it in. To the, and it does audio. Yeah. And we'll give them the audio. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, we spend a lot of time working on that. It's bilingual, English, French. Uh, but without the headset, though, because not everybody carries a headset. Is it still audio? We, we don't allow the audio to come out into the public because that's a, a privacy no. issue, obviously. But no. so the folks, a lot of people don't have their own headsets yeah. in their pocket. So the folks that, that, that are fully blind and are using these types of systems definitely do carry their own yeah. headsets. Yeah. But what about people who are low vision who don't carry headsets with them? So we try to make the, the uh, on-screen display as large and bright as possible. No, uh, no, 
low vision. I understand. Okay. So as large and bright as possible for, for folks, because many people who are low vision, they'll just try to get close, right? Uh, the, the, quite often people don't want to go to audio if they still have some vision left. No. Now they can use them both together. They can have, they can choose. There's actually the choice to completely blank the screen because you may not want someone looking over your shoulder, your balance. Or if you're low vision, you can keep the screen on while you also listen to the audio and kind of follow along. So are the Presto gates in the same spot in every station? Well, of course, the stations differ in their design. Yeah. But, uh, and go ahead, Adam, if you have um, but, um, but they've tried, they've tried their best to make, usually put the accessible gate sort of in the same spot in the lineup when they put them in the station. Because that's what I'm asking, right? So that people can consistently wayfind. Right, right. The other thing too is uh, what we hear from our folks is they like to hear that that beeping and and that hustle bustle, the doors opening, and so they will actually use that as a wayfinding tool. When I come in, I'm going to listen. I hear the deep, 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 whatever. All oh, it makes sound. I was never aware of that. Well, when you go into a TTC station, you hear all of those. No, the uh, Presto uh, okay. machines that you purchase or load your cards. Oh. Those make some noises as well, but I'm, okay. I mean the fair lines in order to... to yeah. To, you know when a bunch of people are tapping in mm. on... Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The gate makes a noise. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a, a tactile indicator of, of where uh, to, to, to tap your card. And we've added... We heard, we heard feedback from folks that were having difficulty reaching, so we added a lower reader yeah. on the accessible... On are they on everything now? Because I hear they're still missing from some. They're on 95% of yeah. the mm. There are still one or two, but in every station where there is an elevator, they have, they have put in mm -hmm. the... Well, Mr. Foster was saying, because I, I indicated that there's an issue for me that the gates um, are discriminatory, wherein that they have two gates and the rest are not accessible and oftentimes the accessible gates are not working because most people psychologically will walk through a wider gate than they will through yeah. a narrow gate mm -hmm. and so therefore when the gates are broken unless they're open they're no longer accessible and that again impedes people i used to sit at dupont station which is my station mm -hmm. and watch and one day I, I said okay i'm taking this one day and let's see how many people use the uh, quote accessible gates yes yep. see how I spend my days um, and uh, literally you know I can't assume who doesn't have a disability or not no. but most people were using the accessible gates period yeah um, and mm -hmm. so no. uh, at DuPont station by the way you can't use a wheelchair or a yes you can now no is the elevator working now yep when it's been up for about a year no it has not you're wrong about that I know yep. DuPont yeah, That's not, I, no, you're I, thinking a different station, not I DuPont. No, I know DuPont. No, it's been there for a year, no. trust, trust me. Listen, I'm going to go, I'm going to take a picture, brother, and I'm going to email it to you. It okay, because I know DuPont station as dope. my station. Okay, and we had to fight them to make sure that you had enough elevators there where they were trying to limit. And even still, they only gave us three. We wanted four, they gave us three. But they were starting out with two. We pushed for, yeah. you know what I mean? But in any event, my concern... Well, now that the, you're telling me, and I'm just going to go with what you're telling me, yeah. that the gates are, uh, sorry, there are elevators that are working. If, again, if you can't get into a system, yeah. it's no longer accessible. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to tear down all those expenses that you've caused us to have just to make an accessible system. But it's nothing for you to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> are you impressed? I'm impressed, though, yeah. I, yeah. Missed, I was not at the beginning of the meeting because it was not too easy, too easily <laughs> available, the info. In fact, I have trouble getting it from the oh. phone call and get right. information from somebody who had a website yeah. up. Okay, and that was at 6 o'clock tonight, and I was in the East Stand coming on transit and had to go past my daughter to tell her I couldn't have my, my meal and my cards with my daughter and son-in-law because I had to get downtown. She went online, and she was the one who told me what time it started. It was already 6.20. And then I had to come down by the yeah. Queen Park. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Down the street. 
about that. Jog. I'm 71 yeah. with arthritis and fibromyalgia, and I was jogging here because I'm an aging grand. Yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be there on yeah. Thursday yeah. night? Yeah. Where? That's great. Yeah. I here. The TDT had their accessibility for it. I didn't even know about it, Adam. So thank you for letting me know. It's not even on their website. Yeah, the well, no, I've looked it up. You saw it on the website? Yeah. Well, where? Because I looked it up. Do you have to look um, under a specific heading like accessibility? Yeah, yeah. Because it's not on their public notices or events. And That's where I looked. And it definitely is on the new public page of the new wheel trans too. Okay, but you have to be on there to look. Should be on your main page when you look at public. I know, events. but it is. It, 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 it was there today when I okay. launched it. Yeah. Okay, because last night it wasn't there, so yeah. maybe now it's there. I'm gonna so, look. And it's here at six is the pre. Um, and then at seven eh, in this very building. Okay, thank you for the info, brother. And then it's gonna go till nine. Yeah, I just hate how they run these things. Though. It really annoys me. It probably won't be run much better, but mm -hmm. but at least you can hear what. Yeah. Thank you for letting me know. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming out here. Uh, Sister, what area of the city are you in? Denver. Okay. 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 Do you do you need a ride to a subway? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. No, on foot. Thank you, Yen. Good night. Good night.